Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Comedian's Tea Party and this week my special guest is the one and only Matthew Crosby. Now this was a very good, I, I love this conversation so much, like we had so much fun. Honestly Matthew is just, just a really really lovely bloke and very generous with his time. Honestly if he didn't have to get off to go pick up his daughter I, I'm pretty certain that we could have talked away into the night. We could just kept talking forever. So yeah, it's it's a really good chat. It's really good fun. We we had a good laugh. We covered some questions from listeners, which sort of they're not serious as such, but they you know rendered serious answers. It's a really good bit of the chat, and a lot of the chat is just sort of it's just absolute nonsense based around sort of real things. It's really really enjoyable. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it too, because I uh, honestly I was I was laughing my head off the whole way through editing this, which is a very good sign, I think. Now, what I will say <laughs> about editing, we will reference a few times the fact that uh, the recording of it didn't start off perfectly. Basically, if you remember back to the Jamie Lemon episode, I was I was so nervous talking to Jamie Lemon, I didn't hit the record button to start with. Now, in this particular scenario, I did hit the record button, but I didn't fully check the recording software and missed the first 25 minutes of the conversation. So that's where we pick up in this podcast. <laughs> we, we basically start again. We hit the reset button, start again. But we sort of don't because we, we refer to it a couple of times. But just so you know, that's, that's what we're talking about. And just to give context to something that happens a bit later on, just as the podcast was falling apart, we were talking about death. And Matthew was saying that he's basically been podcasting for so long that he would like to be podcasting when he dies, which sounds dark, but that will make more sense as you get into it. Just to say as well, if you're a new listener and you notice there's a couple of uh, bleeps where it sounds like Matthew or I would have been saying a name, that is the name of my fiance. She she just uh, prefers it when we redact her name from the conversation. So that's that's what happens there. Thankfully, Matthew gets a pronunciation just right. Thank you to Twinings for my tea. I had a, an Energize, which I've had before, and it was delicious as ever. And Matthew had a tea, which sounds like it was absolutely incredible from Fee and Brown who are in Beckenham, Fee and Brown. So go and check them out. Tea called Glow. And I would absolutely recommend doing what Matthew didn't and using a tea strainer. <laughs> it, it leads to amusing results, you will see. While there may have been issues recording this podcast, it does lead to Matthew naming me the Mark Ronson of podcasting, which I will very much take to the bank. So it is a moderately long chat, so I'll get straight on with the podcast and then come back at the end for, you know, the social links and, and, and what he's plugging, because I forgot to ask him about that. So he gave it to me, so I'm doing it at the end. So in the meantime, enjoy the podcast, because this is genuinely, genuinely brilliant. I, it's one of my favourite ones, in, and I know I say that every time, it's one of my favourite ones, but every one, I just love it. Oh, I, I love doing this, man. It's, it's, it's cool. So enjoy yourselves. See you at the end. What's weird is not that like the settings that I've got it on would normally make it very loud, but there's something coming through. So maybe I'll, hopefully I'll be able to boost it in post, and then it'll be. Yeah, I hope so. Well, look, as of as of however far into the conversation we are on this, I'm now recording myself at home. Great. So you'll have a you'll have us from ten minutes in. Yeah. Which yeah, cool. I mean, that's fine. We haven't said anything worth remembering yet. So that's well. Speak for yourself, mate. But, uh... <laughs> I've been giving you absolute gold. Yeah, man. you gave me some real fine philosophical I ref, points. I, ref, and all I refer you back to exactly the, the the philosophical nature of the the listener knowing more than the, uh, the the podcast recorder. Yeah, right. I'm just I'm just gonna double check the settings for the sake sure. for the sake of recording, and then I'll get to that question and I'll I'll tear it up again because yeah, it's it's a good question. Oh, this is uh, what a nightmare. Oh, I do apologise yeah, for my... Uh... So, no, no, don't worry, Si, it's fine. Please don't worry about it. It's These things happen. How do I get this back full screen? Mm. Great. Oh, I mean, this doesn't matter. I could do this at any point. 
Uh, oh, I've done it. Great. Cool. Oh, I'm very, I'm very clever. <laughs> I'm clearly not very clever. I'll f this right up. Let's just let's just go let's go from the top again. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll we'll treat I'll treat again. it. I won't do any callbacks to any of the stuff we've talked about mm. before. We'll talk about <laughs> other things. Yeah, it's a real shame. We got so we did we did generally have some uh, lovely conversation going on there. It's all right. I've I, I've had lovely conversations in the past. I'll have them again. Yeah. Don't worry. This will this we'll we'll be able to do this again. Yeah. No worries. Absolutely. Right. This is the worst thing to have happened during this pandemic. I think that's I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Just when we thought the news was turning around. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, they announced a vaccine today. It's like ninety percent. Yes, a ninety percent effective vaccine. So I think I, I think the way today has gone so far, we'd be in the ten percent. Yeah. 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 We're both dying, for sure. Yeah. I can't I can't see that as good news for us. We're definitely. <laughs> If if there's a if there's a that does mean that you know it does mean that two people out of every ten is not gonna sorry one person out of every yeah. ten is not gonna is not gonna do it and that's got that's got to be you know yeah I, I think you and I are both in that bracket which is quite statistically unlikely isn't it that we should be in the same well, uh, in the same conversation it's it's funny you should say that I I think my chances of bad things happening are moderately higher than most because uh, I had a surgery on my eye two and a half years ago. Um, oh my goodness! Okay. And uh, what, what was it to do? Well, I had a thing called. Sorry, my, I had something in my eye. It was that eye, though. That's uh, I wasn't just pointing at it. But while we're there, uh, sure. That's that, that's the eye. Now, now I can now I can see. Yeah. It. I was looking at bo looking at both your eyes. Going, it was a real guessing game. Yeah, which, which one of these eyes? Which one's wrong? No, I had a thing called keratoconus, which is quite a rare thing, anyway. And especially, wasn't she an atomic kitten? <laughs> yes, that is pretty much what I asked when they told me what I had. Uh, of course and they just look confused but it's basically like it's a thing that affects males in their late teens to early 20s and i developed right. it when i was 29 so they they were already saying this isn't correct like this is already right. wrong but it's is it because you're sort of quite young at heart i think so yeah i look young and then yeah yeah the you've also got cradle cap as well haven't you you've also got colic kind of all, <laughs> load of, a load of other baby related diseases you are literally the, the oldest man we've ever seen to have colic <laughs> unbelievable yeah 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 is it when a baby's born breech and they have to have their legs in stirrups oh well if a baby's born breech you know what i i I don't. I don't actually know the answer to what happens when a baby is born breech. I know it, it's actually not as much of a problem as it used to be. Yeah. But is that what happened to you then? That's what they were saying. That's, it's it's that, a bit like when a baby that was happened born two breech. weeks ago. Yeah, been uh, right. Been sleeping funny <laughs> since. <laughs> so yeah, so I had this surgery, and basically they they said there's a ninety six percent chance of success, and if it goes wrong, there's like the four percent chance that it would be an infection, and so like it'd be really easy to treat. And then I yeah. had something that there'd be much, much less than like half a percent chance of happening. And my cornea melted. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. So I had to have a new cornea, like a dead person's cornea hand stitched into my eye. Wow. And then just basically since then, like I've had real rare reactions to anything that's happened. So can I can I ask as well? Because they, you know, like so you've now got, you know, when they say like the eyes of a dead man. Yeah. As like an expression, you literally do have, or well, the eye of a dead person. Certainly, we don't know. Yeah. And did you, when you know, after this had happened, have you had, have you seen any unusual <laughs> things? I did. That you think could have come from that person's life? Yeah, I did wonder if it'd be like the, you know, the Simpsons episode, Treehouse of Horror, hair to pay. Yes. I, yeah. I did exactly. wonder if it'd be that sort of thing, and uh, like all of a sudden, I'd sort of become racist or something. You could have racist eyes. Yeah. Very, I mean, you know, very fashionable to be racist at the moment, you know, yeah, if you go on big. Twitter, it seems like it's really taking off, <laughs> but, um, but well, that's, that's an amazing thing. So you, you, your cornea melted. Yeah. So I had, and was I had that, a new one. Was that, was that a painful experience to have a, your cornea melt, melt out of your eye? Uh, it didn't feel good. Yeah. No. And was there, a, was there a risk of losing your sight? Yeah. 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 Well, um, I was, where it had melted, the, basically the cornea being like the, the f sort of front of your eye I, yeah. I, I had gone blind in that eye for a week oh my goodness yeah and then so uh, did you um if you go blind in one eye because you know like if you if you go blind your other senses get heightened yeah if you go blind in one eye do you hear better in one ear oh did you know is that to be the case no i, I would i would say definitely not because uh, my hearing is quite poor <laughs> right well let's not tempt fate by chatting too much about that <laughs> I don't want uh, I don't want like one of the bones in your ears to melt or something like that. Yeah, that is you know, definitely what happened. Your eardrums to put, you know, your eardrums to to, to sort of uh, 
suddenly start bubbling and boiling and pour out down your neck. Yeah, there would be a lot of this. Uh, wait, no, am I thinking of it? Are there are there bones in the ear? I've... Yeah, there are little little soft bones yeah. that vibrate that you get the sounds. I thought yeah. so. Yeah, because uh, uh... there are three little bones. I don't. I, I'm trying. I was I was trying to remember what they were. I know you have cochlear ear plants, but I don't yeah. think co- a cochlear is one of the bones. Um, There's but, uh, something yeah, to do with a definitely... hammer, isn't there? Yes, that's right. That's yeah. that's taking me right back to the sort of diagrams you'd have to study in biology. Yeah, GCSE biology. Yeah, all of these things that you know, just none of it I've retained. I've not retained no information. All of it is kind of it's, it's a bit like this now. Going, oh, I half remember there being some bones. Yeah, in an ear. I wasn't even that sure. Vibrate. That was... Yeah, I mean. Well, I guess it's because you never hear of people like the bones you know about are the bones that people break. Yeah, the legs, the arms, I know about maybe leg bones. the toe, yeah. the back. These are all the key, you know the, the the spine, I believe they call it. Yeah, in medical circles, but uh, all of these things, the skull, that's a big bone. People a big know bone. about these. Yeah, the, I, t- I tell you what, they're the, they're the bones you clock if you see a skeleton. You know, Absolutely. like a kind of Halloween dancing skeleton. You never, you very rarely see. Oh, it's, it's amazing. I saw this amazing Halloween skeleton up. Uh, up, Someone had mounted it on their roof. It had amazing ear bones. Yeah. You never think of that. They never put those it's, in. No, it's skull, it's ribs, it's, you know. Yeah. Interestingly, thighs. You, you can break your nose, but there's, to my knowledge, no bones in your nose, like across the bridge, obviously, but the rest yeah, is cartilage, you, isn't it? So, What are you breaking when you break your nose? Yeah. The car- Are you breaking the cartilage? Because oh, cartilage so. surely can just, grow, can just grow back. So if, you're, if you've got a boxer's nose and your nose is kind of collapsed, yeah. is that... They're just not trying is hard that because Is that because... Well, it, that, maybe that's it. Yeah. Surely they can put a splint inside somebody's nose and it will just... It will, I guess it's, it's very hard to cast. Yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? Well, funnily enough, ha- I actually... <laughs> I, I I had uh, septa rhinoplasty, which is a uh, surgery on my nose. Uh, right. Yeah, both the inside and outside, and they do. So your your head on. has had the full MOT, hasn't it? It's yeah. had the full service. So you've had a, you've had a replaced cornea. You've had a septo rhinoplasty. Was that for what was was that for uh, snoring? Was it like uh, a deviated well, septum? What I, was the... So I, I, throughout my lifetime, I've broken my nose roughly seven times. Right. Yeah. So the inside, so you, the um, the the cartilage was like that. It's like properly bent, and now it's still bent, but like that. It's sort of a little bit, little bit better. But the but the outside was a little bit bent as well. So they just straighten that up and really. We don't have to do all, all seven of them, but talk me through some of the times you've broken your nose. I'd love to know about it. Uh, so I broke my nose three times when I was younger before I learned to put my hands out, falling over. Right, big fan of walking around with your hands in your pockets. Yeah, really. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Never had, the, never had the reflexes to stop the pavement before it hit you in the nose. No, what's funny about that is, so I worked in... Well, I mean, let's face it, everything's funny oh, about Oh, there's that. a lot that's funny about that. Yeah, child I mean, falling over is always funny. Yeah, I mean, sure, obviously I've, I've, I've got a, you know, I've, I've got a little daughter. And I don't want, obviously don't want her to be falling over and breaking her nose. But a, a little kid, especially a kid, you know, a kid who's now grown up to be a, you know, a, a lovely looking adult like yourself, oh, sorry. Very, very funny to think of you falling over three <laughs> times before you realised. Three times as well before you realised. I tell you what, maybe the problem's me. Yeah. Maybe it's not the ground in gravity. Maybe it's me that's stopping this from being, uh, yeah. you know. Well, actually, as an adult, while I was, I was working in a theatre for quite a while. And one year when we had a pantomime in, we had a group of acrobats. And during shows, <laughs> like between shows... Um, they'd occasionally sort of set stuff up on the stage and then just go and practice. And one day they right. turned around to all the crew and said, oh, do you want to come and try this stuff out? And we were like, uh, yes, we do. Absolutely, of course. Like there's an opportunity to bounce off a trampoline and hit a wall or something. So, hit Which it took you right back to your childhood, didn't it? <laughs> it really did. Well, the thing is they put the, the box out like in the middle of the stage and it had the, uh, like trampoline <laughs> on one side and a big crash mat on the other side. And they got everyone. They said, right, so just work up to it slowly. Sort of <laughs> go, go up to it, put your hands on the box and sort of roll over. So we all yeah. did that. And then they said, right, so now it's time to just try and jump over the entire box. And basically everyone did it, but they had to stop me from doing it because I wasn't putting my hands out to land <laughs> properly. So I still haven't learned. So I was just, so I was jumping is... over the box and landing straight on my head. What is the kind of like, you know, I, we know about the kind of the fight, flight or, or freeze instinct. Yeah. Is that the freeze instinct that you're just, or is it just, is it just pure <laughs> kind of like subconscious idiocy? I think that it's, you're not... yeah, the latter. <laughs> That your your brain doesn't go, oh, here comes that wall. <laughs> well, the head's soft enough, isn't it? That'll take it. 
Oh uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I've crashed my motorbike a couple of times as well, and of course, yeah, of course, of course, a guy like you, <laughs> of course, he's getting a motorbike. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, no reason for a guy who's got no sort of inbuilt personal safety mechanism. <laughs> And you're basic. You're basically a crash test dummy in human in human form. Sorry. Yeah. I'm ch- I'm choking. I'll tell you why I'm choking. Yeah. Go um, on. It's because I bought uh, inter- interesting tea, <coughs> and um, it's loose leaf tea, and I've been drinking it. Oh, oh hang on a sec. Little loose. No, I've not. I've not got. Um, I've got a little loose leaf in my throat. Anyway. <coughs> yeah. So you got a, you got a motorbike. Yes. Yeah, so uh, a few times when I've crashed that, mm. because, you know, you do. I've, sure. I've just bounced straight off my head. Wow. In landing, and presumably, but... uh, presumably you're wearing some sort of crash helmet. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I tend to buy sort of quite good crash helmets, and uh, and it's it's been a good idea, because it, it when you land on your head and you're wearing a good crash helmet, it feels like you're landing on a cushion. It's quite nice. Really? Yeah. Well, this is what you should be doing, you know, 24-7. Yeah. You should have... A uh, crash helmet on at all times because let's face it, you 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 can't be trusted with that head. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, the fair. head. I I think I think maybe the head itself. You know, you've got your corneas melting. You know, your nose is falling off. Yeah, the head doesn't want to be part of the rest of the body. No, no, the no. The head's doing everything it can. In fact, in fact, the body doesn't want to be a part of the head. The arms aren't. You know, <laughs> I think the arms aren't coming up to protect the head. It feels like your head and your body are at complete odds. Are you sure? And you maybe want to, you know, speak to your your parents or guardians. Yeah. Are you sure that it wasn't just a cornea that was replaced on your head? Are you sure you haven't had a dead man's head yeah, maybe grafted onto thing. your body at, at some point in, in, you know, way back in your childhood that you don't remember? Yeah, it's possible. I can't rule it out. That is, uh, yeah. It's, w- it's worth investigating. Yeah, it would explain a lot. <laughs> it really would. <laughs> Yeah. I'll, I'll, I, I, you, you, the, the motorbike thing. I, I've never, I, I never owned a motorbike. But when I went to Vietnam, we stayed on the island of Phu Quoc, and I hired a motorbike from the hotel we were staying in, and they didn't care about checking driving license or anything like that, which sure. was good because I didn't, I didn't have a driving license. I wasn't able to drive. But they said, uh, which one of you wants to, which one of you wants to ride the motorbike out of myself and my wife? And my wife said, I'll do it. We already agreed she was going to do it because she could drive. Yeah. So they said, okay, so just to show you how it works, you know, you twist the uh, handles this way and you twist the handle that way. And that's the, you know, those are the brakes there. And they, they sort of sat her on it outside the hotel, the two guys who were hiring it for her. And the first thing she did was like rev it super fast yeah. and fire it straight into the hotel <laughs> sign. So she, she almost, she, I mean, she, she could have, she could have decapitated herself. She could have taken down the sign. Luckily, neither of those things happened, but they basically went, you're not you're not uh, gonna yeah. go on this we'll give it to this guy instead even though i wasn't able to drive but yeah great fun but i came off it a few times yeah and especially i don't know if you've ever been to vietnam but there everyone's on motorbikes and there's no there's like no safety like everyone's very safe and everyone knows what they're doing yeah but if you want to make a turning you just make the turning you don't indicate if, if you if you're walking down the street and you want to cross the road you step out into the road yeah sure and everybody swerves around you that's how it works even though the roads are constantly like seven eight nine deep of of uh, motorcyclists yeah yeah so when i the first time i had to cross the road in vietnam i basically followed an old lady down the street until she crossed the road and then just walked right like directly behind her because the you know the the traffic was swerving. Yeah, it's, it, it's a real, it's a real show of n- nerve. But but yeah, I came off it loads of times. Yeah, I came off it. I, I came off it when my wife was on the back. We well, we both came off it. But I I was the reason because I was riding it, <laughs> and we knocked into a, a metal pillar. Yeah, that was we were basically I was crossing a motorway uh, on the on the bike to try and refuel. Good group. We knocked into a we knocked into a, like a metal pillar that like fell across the entire motorway luckily it was not a busy motorway oh, no. but we then had to like stop the bike on the hard shoulder run back into the motorway and like move this metal pillar out of the way because the cars probably wouldn't have seen it Good grief. But it would have caused a massive car a, a pile up but yeah that was my that was the only time i really uh got are you still are you still on the motorbike now you i still... am yeah absolutely yeah i mean obviously not not now no not right now no you would be I mean, a lot we've of had We've had enough tech difficulties without you trying to record this on a motorbike. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a mistake for sure. Yeah. Um, do you want me? To, do you want me to tell you about the tea I got, by the way? Because I know that was yes. the. Yes. Um... Uh, I'll tell you what. Before you do that, obviously, the introduction that I did was on the last episode. 
Uh, Let's do the introduction the again. Yeah, absolutely. Recording. So uh, I'll, I'll do sure, it again. But the, the great lost episode that one day, one day you'll be going through your hard drive and you'll be like, oh, there's just a faint bit of audio. We can turn it up. Yeah. And you'll realise, nah, it wasn't really worth saving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of libelous information in there. <laughs> it's true. I really went in. I, w- I went in hard, actually. I slayed a few sacred cows early doors. And I'm glad, actually, that technology <laughs> failed me. Yeah. It's good for your marriage that, that nobody will ever hear this. Too right. Yeah. Too right. Your poor wife. So, hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Comedian's Tea Party with Sai Eves. With me, Sai Eves, and this week my guest is Matthew Crosby. I don't know why I said that, like I was you'd broken. Re- <laughs> you really, yeah. I mean, it was I, I, it was like a bad Skype connection, even though we've got a fantastic Skype connection yeah. here. You really, you were really faltering as if to be like, I'm not entirely sure who the guest is this week. <laughs> I've been talking to him for 20 minutes now and probably another 20 minutes before when it when it failed yeah. but I'm st- I'm not entirely which who who have I got here on the end of the line I've got your name written on the screen uh, I've al- I've already introduced <laughs> in you case. once I I mean I wonder if that's ever happened to you know a, a, a Terry Wogan or a Michael Parkinson or a Jonathan Ross that they've ever got to introduce the guests and gone. I just don't know who this is. Who's coming on? Yeah, I think it's more. It, it would be. It would be worse if you did it at the end of an interview. Yes. I think you, if you got to the end of an interview, you said, "Well, we had an absolutely lovely chat, and have a great day. Bye." <laughs> you know, and just let them. Let and them that walk was Mark off. Crasby. <laughs> But anyway, thank you very much for having me on the uh, yeah, on the podcast. Thanks so much for coming on. Now you off. We we actually sort of we we ended up planning this maybe two days ago to do this recording. Yeah. So I didn't have enough time for you to post me tea. So I went out this morning. I I stopped my run halfway through my run uh, through Beckenham, and I stopped off at Fee and Brown. I'll show you their little bag here. Fee and Brown uh, coffee shop, who are now they they've done what all shops seem to have done on the high street, which is they've pushed. A table in the doorway, yeah, and have made the and made that sort of like made it a takeaway shop. Sure, basically. everything you could get from Fee and Brown, and I saw they had some uh, exciting looking teas. So I thought, right, I'll get some because I'll tell you now, normal tea I don't drink. Okay, I don't drink I don't drink a normal caffeinated tea. So I've bought what is what's called Glow here, oh. and it is uh, it's a loose leaf tea, as you heard from me choking earlier on. <laughs> it's got hibiscus, nice. cocoa, uh, sorry, cacao nibs. I'm guessing it says. I think they've they've struggled to spell cacao there, but that's uh, cacao nibs. How have they spelt it? Well, they've spelt it. There's a, a C, an O, a C, and then an A that they've turned into an O, and then an A again that could also be a U. <laughs> but I think sure. I think I think it's cacao nibs. That's the, that, those are the kind of nibs you, you you tend to get when it's nibs. That is ju- the the most common nib for sure. I think so. Other yeah. than a fountain pen. The, the pen, obviously, the pen nib, I think the pen nib probably, if you said nib to somebody, I would imagine... They're going they think, cacao. They think, they think, they think, they think, certainly think cacao or they think um, uh, biro. Rose hip, rose petals and freeze dried strawberry. Ooh. So it's a real treat. It's actually, it's not a bad tea to drink loose leaf because most of those things you'd want to eat anyway. Yeah. You know, the freeze dried strawberry, you can eat that. The, the nibs, the, uh, the rose petals, sure. I wouldn't sit down of an evening with a big bowl of rose petals and watch the telly. You wouldn't? But they're certainly not, not anymore. <laughs> not at my age. But, uh, you know, maybe when I was a young man, I could, you know, I could mainline rose petals. I'd be up all night snorting rose petals. Yeah. But no, now, now it's, a, it's a treat. Dissolved in water. It's actually, it's, it's a very nice tea as well. That sounds absolutely so I would never, delicious. I would never have bought that ordinarily were it not for doing this podcast. Oh, so wow. it's, a, it's a delight. What's your what are you drinking? Straight, well, uh, straight down the middle. No, I mine's not too exciting. Uh, well, it's it's very nice, and uh, thank you very much to Twinings for sending it to me. I'm having a Twinings Energize. Oh, which is it's the um so it's the it's the isotonic sports drink of the tea world. <laughs> it's exactly that. Yeah, it would have been advertised by John Barnes if he was uh, if they were advertising on the telly today. What is it? What's it got in it that's energizing you so much? Um, I'm imagining there's gonna be ginger. Ginger always seems to be the thing they. They put into things to sort of pep people up. Well, I think the energising part of it is the uh, guarana. Oh right, which is, and I think that's I think that's what that is. Is that a type of is that a type of sugar? No, or is it I a type know. of fruit? Let's find out. Well, let's We've got yeah, technology. Let's, ta- let's take this to the internet and find out. Yeah, what is what what exactly is guarana? Guarana, it's a plant. Okay, and oh, I can't say but- many of those words. They're not because they're, they're deeply offensive. No, I was going to say, okay, right. 
<laughs> native. This is a family podcast. <laughs> Uh, native to the Amazon basin and especially common in Brazil, Guara- nice. Guarana has large leaves and clusters of flowers and is best known for the seeds from its fruit, which are about right. the size of a coffee bean. Okay, so that's so it's it's so it's it's kind of like a little coffee bean type fruit. Yeah. That um Oh it's, that, it's got uh, it's got caffeine the, in it. Oh, there we go. That's what's energizing you. Yeah. Because I There's, I would or, I would ordinarily I not really a caffeine y kind of person. Try and avoid try and avoid caffeine if I can. Yeah, I don't have coffee, so I have normal tea, which is pretty much what gets me through like a long drive. But sure, I I, I stopped drinking coffee a little while ago, and I replaced it with the worst drink that exists. You're which in is black instant. No, 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 no. If, if anything, you're in, as we know from Bear Grylls. <laughs> Um, that's actually better you, to drink you can for live you off of that for sure than than black decaf instant coffee, oh. which is what I drink, and it is. It doesn't do anything to you. Yeah, it sounds joyless, and it doesn't taste nice. Yeah, but if you want to drink a hot drink, that's that's my hot drink. Although now I've got this, I've got to work out some sort of way. I've got to get like a strainer, so I can't be because like you know, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to choke on a. I don't want to choke on a, a, a little because it is a little bit. You know these kind of teas, the loose leaf teas. They've got a sort of potpourri quality to them. Yeah, sure. They've got that sort of. They'd look nice in know, a bowl, and taste, they smell taste amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They smell fantastic. They look nice in the bowl. However, you do end up occasionally with little bits of twig between your teeth when you're drinking tea. Sure. One so of the have joys. You, have of you not used is, a strainer? I don't own a strainer. Right. You see, this is the this is the. Well, I mean, I I think I probably do, but I'm I've just moved house. Yeah. And we've boxed up lots of stuff. And in fact, we boxed our house up in two stages. One to sell it, which was we got all the junk out of the house so we could take nice photos. And when people look, walked around it, they would be like, oh, this is a house with loads of room. Yeah. And then we boxed up another load of stuff to move. And the original load of stuff that we boxed up at Christmas might contain a tea strainer. Right. But it also a tea strainer might also have gone to the charity shop because we were like, we never drink loose leaf tea. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. But now I've got this. I'm going to have to go and get myself a strainer. But it's an unstrained. I'm basically drinking a load of tree bark in a mug. Yeah. Loose. It's very nice, though. The, the flavor is amazing. It sounds it's... delicious. Yeah. I'm going to have to. Well, I mean, I, I'm not often in Beckenham or uh, ever so I'd have to make a special I mean if trip. you were in Beckenham we probably would have done that um, we probably would have done this face to face but yeah uh, that's a fair point but yeah you know next time you, you, ha- you find yourself in Beckenham get yourself down to Fee and Brown happy to, I mean they're not a sponsor but I'm happy to give them a plug yeah get yourself down to Fee and Brown and uh, enjoy some lovely uh, glow tea yeah that looks absolutely delightful it's great Speaking of Beckenham, because uh, so I, I listened to your radio show with Ed Gamble. Oh, thank you. So, uh, yeah, no worries. It's uh, it's really good fun. Well, uh, my fiance, when we first met, she got me into uh, D- John and Ellis's show. Right, great. And, yeah, uh, yeah. We always she'd say to me every week, "Oh, have you listened to the boys?" And she wanted me to point out to you that you two are now the boys. Right. Yeah. It's funny you called. You, she calls them the boys because that's what my wife calls. She actually, she actually calls them my boys, <laughs> and so that so her boys are well. It's basically it's basically like boys who do podcasts. Her boys are to a, to a certain extent Ed and James from Off Menu. Yeah. John and Ellis. Her new boys in lockdown have been Josh and Rob. Oh, okay. For their lockdown parenting podcast. Yeah. Because obviously we you know we're new parents. We have got a little baby. And it's fun to listen to other people's experiences of that. Yeah. But yeah, that's... So I think actually... Um, I think actually we technically... Oh, she'll own Pappy's as well. Pappy's is, is also her Of boys. course, yeah. So um, so technically, yeah, yeah. We, we You know, your your partner and my partner, very similar. Very similar in their lingo. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, potentially the same woman. Probably not. Um, so- well, I mean, I I heard a voice from off screen and she's... My, you know, my wife is not currently in the house. So there's there every go. chance that she's not really at work, that she's, uh, I don't even know where, where where you're recording this from, but she's she's taken the car, so she could easily have driven to, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, where, where whereabouts are you, if it's not? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say South End, because you, you probably... Say South End. Yeah, yeah, you probably won't know I, the town that I'm in. Where are you, Shrewsby Ness? Shrewsbury Ness, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh my God, amazing. I got, I just guessed it. Yeah. yeah that was guess. Um, that was not bad at all. Um, so uh, yeah, I do know that. Um, I know that from my friend Richard Sandling. Uh, oh, okay. he, he had a song about it, which was it, it was the, it's the end of the line, isn't it? 
Yes, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. about him getting pissed on the train, going home to South End, yeah. and we would wake up in. Is it Shrewbury-ness? Is that how you say it? Shrewbury-ness. Shrewbury-ness, yeah, Sh- yeah. Shoe. Shrewbury-ness. As in the foot covering, very. Or the pastry. Very ness, yeah. Or, yes. or the pastry, yeah, Shoeber- absolutely. Shrewbury-ness, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was his, his song. Uh, so yeah. the only other place I would have, you know, I, apart from South End, the only other place I would have said that was kind of close close to it. But there you go. Yeah. It's very, a, a real slubnog millionaire situation there. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, she could have got there in time, basically. It's half past three now. She left around 9 a.m. Yeah. She could easily have got to you to be pottering around in the background. But I would, sure. I, I feel like... I, it's I feel unlikely. Like if, it's unlikely. And also it would be, it's almost like she wants to get caught. Yeah. At this stage, oh, that's she... a dangerous game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think there's, you know, if it's 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 at this stage in in her double life she's living that she goes, it's actually getting on top of me, but I don't have the moxie to sort of confess. Yeah, I want I want to be found out. That is a stage where the serial killer starts leaving clues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. they're just showing off now. Yeah, get you. It's when they start calling up the police officers and calling them, "Oh, Mister Policeman." You know, oh, Mister Policeman, I gave you all of the clues, yeah. and all of that kind of thing. Yeah, starts yeah. starts telling them they they like what they're wearing, exactly. that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So they're there in the you know they're there in the town square looking around, <laughs> what's going on, seeing all these faces, they see a faces, they don't know who it is. Yeah, yeah, th- that's that's the stage it's in. It's more likely that they're two different people. It's highly likely that that is the case. Yeah, but I, yeah. I will be questioning my fiance. To be honest, she, I think she, she doesn't go out much. So because she works, right. she works from home. I mean, she's not a hermit. Here's the thing, yeah. My my wife doesn't work from home, so maybe she's work. Maybe she does work from home, just from your home. Yeah, but my she does stay here overnight. My fiance, not your wife. Ah, yeah, because my wife does stay in our house overnight. So that's right. there we go. We, we probably cra- not we cracked her. it. Probably not her. What's what's your partner's name? Uh, yeah, Charlotte. No, right. I mean, not that she couldn't change her name, sure. No, but, but, um, it's, but a, no, it seems, it's a it seems legal really process unlikely. to for, yeah. for the sake of just changing it like twice a day. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I don't think I don't think they're the same person. Yeah, but uh, at least we've cleared that up. Yes, absolutely. That could have led to I mean, what, some real confusion. Yeah, or oh, just a, I think I think a certain level of animosity between the two of us that we wouldn't want. I wouldn't want that. No, 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 no. Because we're get we're getting along so famously. We've had such a nice chat so far. Yeah, it would be it would be tough if it was the um what's uh what's the who, who is it R-, R. kelly and usher who do the song same girl oh maybe when they talk about dating the same girl i'm not, I'm not sure i don't know that song uh i'm, I'm well, quite bad <clears throat> at knowing uh the titles of songs anyway i'm it's i, I i'm pretty sure the title same girl but i I'm, i might have the the two people wrong yeah really? we you can know, look we, it up we the, we've got we have the internet here just found out it's what R- garana is it's uh it's definitely r kelly and it is r kelly and usher ah. yes Good work. And it's about, so it's them sitting down together. They sit down together, you know, they're swilling some brandy around. Uh, they're having a conversation about the girl that they're going out with. Yeah. You go, I've, I've got to tell you, I've just started going out with this wonderful, wonderful woman. And then, uh, you know, so Usher says that. And then R. R- Kelly says, oh, you're not going to believe it. I'm actually going out with a wonderful woman as well. They start describing this woman. They realize so, that she drives the, sa- so drives the same car. They lives on the same street. <clears throat> She loves the Waffle House. That's one of the things. Yeah. One of the things she, they, they, they realize she, she loves the Waffle House. She's also got a beauty spot. And they realize, yes, it's the same girl. Yeah. Yeah. They it's, could have, uh, they could have shortened that's not the that by just saying her name right at the start you know, of the song. Do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I've met a girl. Yeah. What's her name? Oh, Jane. Because actually, looking through the lyrics here, they do go, they do go for some odd stuff before they go for first name. Yeah. Five foot four is the first thing they start with. Right, okay. I mean, that's... Man, she's so a, fine. She's standing about five height. foot four. Coca-Cola Redbone. Now, I don't know what that means, no. but maybe that's maybe that's her favourite drink. Maybe. She drives a black Durango. She's got a licence plate that says Angel. Tattoo on her ankle. I mean, the, making... the, the licence plate should give it away, really. The... Yes. I don't even know if her name is Angel, but maybe, you know, maybe it's just, her, maybe it's a nickname. I think, that, but I would say, if I was to say to you, oh, I've just started, I've got this absolutely wonderful new girlfriend. You're going to love her licence plate. Yeah. You'd think I was mad. Absolutely. You'd think, you'd think I didn't, this, is, this feels like, you know, I, I've been caught in a lie here. Also as well, when I was first going out with my wife, I couldn't tell you her number plate with a gun to my head. I couldn't tell you her phone number still to this day. Yeah, I'd have to check on my phone. I'd have to yeah. walk out to the car park to check to check what her <laughs> number plate is. I've <laughs> no idea. Exactly. I've I've got no. You know, got a crib on a uh, Peace Street, right on Seventeenth. Yeah, 
oh, he, I call her TT. And then, yeah. So it's a girl called TT. She went to Georgia Tech. She works for TBS. Yeah, they're dating, for, dating the same girl. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like you're absolutely right. They could, they could have said, yo, Ash, what's up, Kells? I want to introduce you to this girl. Her name's Sharon. Yeah. You go, oh, I guess I'm dating a Sharon as well. Oh, not Sharon Jenkins from Peace Street. Yeah, Sharon Jenkins. Yeah. Boom. We're dating song the same over, girl. And then they, just, song. then they just sing a nice little ditty at the end about how they're they're just friends. Yeah, it's I, they sing a ditty about how it doesn't it doesn't ruin their friendship. Yeah, and that you know I think they they're probably both going to break up with her. I should. I think that's well. I think that's the way it goes. Rather come than to an agreement. Sort of, rather than yeah, but you know what I I I have a feeling though that you know if she's dating R Kelly and she's also dating Usher, who knows what other pop stars she's also dating? Yeah, is she also you know. Is she also dating Steve Brookstein also, from X Factor? You, you've got to imagine that if she's getting back from a date with R. Kelly, Usher's going to turn around and say, why do you smell of wee? <laughs> That's also true, yeah. Why do you smell of wee and why are you dressed with like an oversized lollipop and a bonnet? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, sorry, sorry. And I, as soon as I launched into it, talking about R. Kelly, you've got to remember that he is, of course, one of the worst men he's ever lived. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well, it was a narrow escape for our, our friend TT then, really. Yeah, she got away with it. I yeah. wonder, uh, do you think maybe her number plate is Angel because she's just a big fan of David Boreanaz? It could be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe she's got a series of different cars. She's got one that's got Spike yeah. on the front. Oh, that'd be She's good. got one that's got Giles. You know, she might just be a huge Buffy fan yeah. and is working her way through a collection of vanity plates based around the, the, the show. Yeah. I think Cordelia would be too long to have on a number plate. Maybe. Yeah. It would have to be like C. Delia or something. Yeah, Cordy. Cordy, it could be Cordy, yeah. yeah. But then people might be thinking, why is it Cordy? Is it because she always uses a landline? I think <laughs> it's maybe easier if they just stick with the kind of the bigger hitters. The core four. Angel, Buffy. I mean, I know I said Spike early doors. He's gone. If we're not having Cordelia, we're not having Spike. Yeah. We're having Angel, Buffy. I, I'm going to allow Giles yeah. And um, Alison Hannigan's character, which is... Willow. Willow, of course yeah. it's Willow. Of course it is. What about Xander? Oh, yeah. What about him? I mean, it's, it's a cool looking number plate. Yeah. Maybe people might think... I mean, I, I guess if they saw it out of context, they might go like, oh, big fan of Pointless. Uh, yeah. But actually, in the context of, you know, the rest of the, 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 the cars that she owns, they'd probably guess it. Oh, you'd, but, you would hope so. But she'd have to drive in the whole convoy for people to fully... <laughs> Yeah. What she'd have to do actually is buy one of those uh, trucks with the car, loads of cars on the back. Yes. They, they use for transporting multiple cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Car transport. Because you know that's a car, tra- a car transporting uh, truck. Because that doesn't cost you any extra petrol. No. All you needed the petrol for the one car that's actually the engines on. All the rest is fine. Yeah. Do they all need to be taxed? No one's checking. Ooh. No one's checking those cars way up high. No one's spotting that car going down the motor on the back of a no. truck and. Absolutely. No, that's a good point. And I shouldn't think so. I don't know. No, you you know, that's why people put their cars on bricks if it wasn't taxed, because they, it was the tyres touching the road. If your tyres not, are not touching the road, yeah. you're absolutely fine. Yeah. Well, they put cars on bricks around my way because they steal the wheels. You nick the tyres as well. Yeah, that's, there's, there's, there's two good reasons for it. Yeah. But also as well, you know, they're giving with one hand, they're taking away with the other. Yes, they've nicked your wheels. But on the plus side, you you don't you have to worry about your tax, tax anymore. Absolutely, yeah. Don't need to tax the vehicle anymore. Yeah. So when, when whenever the date rolls around, if you still haven't got yourself tires, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's all good. No one's nicking you for that. Sawn it. Exactly. Yeah. So the only reason that I uh, brought up that about you being a boy is how did that come about? How did we get onto? We were talking about. Oh, you started by listening. You said you listen. You said you, I listened to your radio show. Yeah. You, you, you used to listen to John and Ellis. Yeah. And your partner got you into that. Yeah. And that is how you... And now, and now you've taken over. It. But uh, yeah, so my point anyway being that uh, I know that you've just moved into Beckenham. Also, you mentioned it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Bloody hell, yeah. That was the, about 15 minutes ago I did mention <laughs> Yes, I have just I have just moved to Beckenham. We, that's right. We went on a tangent. That's No, no, it's say. fine. That's that's the that's that's the, the fun nature of this podcast. Yeah. But yeah, I love it. I mean, I, I say it like I wasn't living five minutes down the road before. But yeah. I, 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 and, I, and I grew up in Bromley so I've, I've I've just moved to a different part of the same borough that I was born in yeah you know so I've spent I've, I've spent most of you know with the exception of university in a, a brief period living in Streatham I've basically lived in the borough of Bromley 
Yeah, I've always lived in well, not not South End. I've well, I always lived in this area anyway, within in a ten mile radius. That bit of Essex. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It's all right. Do you? Uh, but do you? Because my, you know, I don't want to take this. I want to turn this into Carrie Lloyd's podcast. But my grand passed away last year, and we we had a funeral back when those those things were uh, allowed with the whole family. Yeah. And um, they talked about her life, and she basically she she lived in Croydon, she worked in Croydon. She travelled a lot, but her home has always been Croydon, and she was buried just around the corner from my old my old flat. Yeah, just off just off Croydon Road in kind of Annerley, Elmer's End, that sort of way. She was buried in that, or she was cremated at least, in that crematorium. And there was an element of sitting there during her funeral, and obviously I was very sad. To, my, my grand passed away. I loved her very, very, very much, but there was also a little bit of narcissism to the to the, the grief, and I was going. Oh God, is this going to be my life as well? <laughs> if I live, you know, if I'm lucky enough to live for another 58 years, I've got to live somewhere different from Bromley for at least a little bit. Yeah. I sat next to my sister who lived, you know, she's just moved to Newcastle from Singapore. So she's definitely got a story, you know? Yeah. She's now living in Newcastle. She used to live in Singapore. She was born in Bromley. You know, my brother lives in Liverpool. Has lived there for a while now, lives in sort of the Wirral now. But they've all got their their kind of... Yeah, They've all got their stories. That, that does sound of, very of, exciting. Of having moving, having having moved around, you know, to live in a, a different major city. But I don't know if you I, do. You, do you feel that? I mean, I've always thought, and South South End is close enough, but we're so close to London. Yeah. What's that? You know, why do you need to live anywhere else? Well, that's it. Like I, because um, you know, I'm a, normally a, a gigging comedian, and I, yeah. I'm like uh, an hour and a half to two hours from most sort of big cities in this area yeah and it's also considerably cheaper than living in london i can get to brighton easily i can get to suffolk norfolk kent and, and your comedy will will take you all over the country yeah. so you'll definitely see in the country but also as well you know, i don't know if you've gigged abroad but it probably will as well you know yeah i've i've done comedy all over the all over the world so it's not like i just sat in my flat the entire time Absolutely. i had a job that i had a job that that allowed me to travel but this was the conversation i was having in my in my head yeah and thinking should i really have you know but should I, i've moved to san francisco and lived there for a year I, I'm, I'm not sure you should because look at it this way it, it, in the future when people put up blue plaques saying matthew crosby lived here very good point you know there's going to be people because sometimes you know traveling around I'm, I'm sure you've seen blue plaques in in many places as have i and yeah. they've said uh, oh you know william shakespeare sneezed in this building once and it's that you're looking at it thinking, oh, no one cares. But you go to you go to your borough, you go to Bromley, and you're like, this is Matthew Crosby's hood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I definitely lived. I definitely lived here for most of my life. Yeah. yeah. So I think you That's... owe it to the area to stay there. You're right, because you always feel a little bit cheated by those. Yeah. Where it said, they'll often say like stayed here, and you're like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, overnight, had a sleepover. <laughs> that doesn't count. You've got to have. Yeah, you've got to have someone who's actually put their roots down there on our road. In fact, two roads along from where I was living before, I was walking along one day. I might, I, you may have even heard this. I think I mentioned it on the on the radio. But um, I was walking along one day. It was right at the, in the middle of lockdown when you couldn't really do anything apart from just be in your house. And so I'd go for I'd go for walks with my daughter, pushing around in the pram. And uh, I walked past a house, and there was a, a blue plaque for Thomas Crapper, <laughs> the inventor of the flushing yeah. toilet. And I went, oh, my God, Thomas Crapper, that's amazing. And uh, the woman who lived in the house was gardening behind the garden wall. But I didn't know she was, I hadn't seen she was there. And she popped up and was like, it's good, isn't it? I was like, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> so we ended up having a chat. But, uh, yeah, really, really exciting when you see someone like that. And I was like, what's your, what's your plumbing like? Yeah. It must be out of this world. She's like, well, it's a, a lot of it's been replaced. I was like, that makes a lot of sense. But she's still got the original, like, drain fittings from... Really? Back in back in Crapper's day. That's amazing. Yeah, I wonder if it adds value. I mean, it must add value to a house. Oh, even it- if it's an even if it's a name like Thomas Crapper. Yeah, it's going to add value to your house, right? That's going to add on a couple of a couple of G's. I should think so. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Surely, surely. And you can't put your own ones up. No, Although, well, no, you I mean, can. You can, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin Turk, the artist, made one of uh, for himself. I could always do the same thing. You know what? Actually, that's what I should do. Rather than, you, you know what? You've, sorry, this has been really useful. <laughs> Rather than worrying about the life I haven't lived, I should lean in harder to the life I have and put a blue plaque yeah. outside my outside my house yeah. and be like, <laughs> I mean, that would be that would be mad, wouldn't it? If someone was like, 
comedian and broadcaster Matthew Crosby currently lives here. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure that. Just go, <laughs> that might go be... to everywhere you've been. I wonder if I can contact the people who who now live in the house we've just sold. Yeah. And say, would you mind I think... if I put up a blue a, a, a blue plaque? Yeah, they'll be all right. With that. On the uh, on the old house by by Anley. If for no other reason, then uh, you could just put a forwarding address on it. A very good point. Yeah. So don't if you're if you're looking for him today, if you've got an Amazon delivery and, and, and he's forgotten to put the address in, yeah. which I did a few times, we're just round the corner. We're five minutes away. It's basically it's you know it's depending on how adventurous you're feeling with Google Maps, it's basically t- two roads. You know. Yeah. You could get there, and you, you know, you could you could walk it in twenty five. You could drive it in four, comfortably. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah, not I think a bad it's, idea I think it's at worth all. Doing. Yeah, thanks. This, is, this has actually been incredibly, incredibly helpful. <laughs> that's what I'm incredibly here for. Useful. Yeah. No, you've done it. You, you've done me a great service here, and I feel like if we hadn't had the technical difficulties, if we hadn't had the reset, it wouldn't have led to this. It wouldn't have. You know, I yeah. think there's something there's something quite good about you know. Do you know what? It's a bit like. Do you ever watch the X Factor? No. When they, um, well, they, they'll, they'll do a thing sometimes, and it's so produced, but it often brings out the best in a performer. Where they'll they'll come out, they'll they'll start singing their song in front of you know Simon and the rest of the judges, and often an audience, and they'll be like, "You shoot me down, but I won't fall, cause I am titanium." And Simon will just put his hand up, right? He'll just put his hand up, and the music will stop, and they'll go, "Look." I like you, but this is the wrong song. <laughs> this is the wrong... You shouldn't be singing this. Have you got anything else you brought? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I have. And then Ant and Deck will look really nervous off to the side of the stage. And, all the, and it will cut to the audience and they'll look really, really, really nervous. And then they'll play a different thing. and It'll be a lot more upbeat. And she'll be like, well, sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water. And everyone will get up and they'll be applauding. And what they've done is they've, they've done the deliberate full start. They knew yeah. she had Valerie up her sleeve. Of course they knew that because she's you know this isn't just thrown together this show but they've let her do the song that, that that isn't quite suited for her in order to bring out the best in her and i think that's what you've done yeah you started off you started me off on uh, titanium you stopped it midway through you went this isn't working this isn't working i mean literally it wasn't working it wasn't recording. yeah it wasn't working this yet. isn't working what else have you got and now we're on valerie and now this is the this is the Valerie of podcasting. Yes, you're welcome. I consider I consider you the Mark Ronson of podcasting, <laughs> and you can you can use that. Yeah. Despite the fact that apparently you've got no idea how to record things, no. you are still the Mark Ronson of podcasting to me. I'm 31 episodes in. Uh, so far, it's just been one sided conversations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. I think. Wasn't that Albert Brooks's first album was called Comedy Plus One? He didn't want to record it in front of an audience. He like made you the sort of second part of the double act oh right i don't know if i i mean i've never i've never heard it so i'm I'm sort of i don't know whether or not he gave you a script that you read in yourself or whether or not it was like you as the listener become the other person but yeah comedy plus one was albert brooks's album that's kind of what you could do yeah you could you could get you could get amazing guests yeah you know and then not record what they say yeah and let allow people to piece together their answers yeah yeah like sort of like that episode of, of Doctor Who, Blink, The Weeping Angels, where there's a recording of David Tennant talking. Now, I've never, I've never, despite the way I look, I'm not a Doctor <laughs> Who aficionado, um, but I know about that. The, they're the angels that every time you blink, they get a bit closer to you. That's it. Yeah, they can only move when right? you're not looking yes. at them. Mm. That's right. I've never seen the episode, but I know of, I know of the lore of it. Yeah. yeah. So what, did, what, what happened to David Tennant's voice? So there's, uh, David Tennant gets sent back in time and then he records a video to get put onto dvds but he's, he's answering questions from a script right. and only reading one side of the script and it's a script of a conversation that happens in the future and that script then gets written down and given to david tennant so that he can record it in the past so that she can reply in the future right yeah. and who's the conversation with in the future a woman called sally sparrow and who's the other person she's speaking to david tennant david tennant yeah so, so how do they, and this is, this is part of the reason why I don't watch these kind of shows because it's confused me already. How do they have the conversation with David Tennant? Why do they need to go back to the past for it to happen? Well, it, they don't have to go back to the past, but he does get sent back to the past by the Weeping Angels. Right. So once they're back in the past, he records this conversation so that she can respond to it because she has to create the scenario where she's being informed what is happening so that she can get the thing recorded it's it's very it's good it's really good it's very well done that episode uh, i don't doubt it worth yeah. watching yeah 
I'm, I'm, I, I watched I, it this week, by the way. I'm not like a mad. Right. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I wouldn't have wouldn't have judged you either way <laughs> if you were. But what? Like, I've got a real blind spot, unfortunately, for anything that doesn't seem that that real. Yeah. Which I know is a terrible. That's a terrible. I'm 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 cutting off huge swathes of fantastic entertainment. Do yourself a but, favor um, and don't watch Jurassic Park. Well, here's the thing. Jurassic Park, I've watched because it feels so grounded in a, you know, it feels like it's grounded in a sort of science, you know. It yeah, is, that's it's, fair. A, it's science fiction, but it isn't like, at no point does Dickie Attenborough just go, oh, also, by the way, I can fly and I can punch <laughs> you through a wall, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, so, and I've, like, I suppose I could, I could watch things with aliens in. That's sort of, that's sort of fine. But I think superheroes and uh, time travel, I, I'm not great with. Yeah, sure. With the exception of, the exception of Back to the Future. Yeah. Which is one of my favourite films. I mean, that but, car doesn't I, even I, go that fast, so that's your. I know. That's the those cars, issue. those cars famously broke down all over the place. That's, yeah. you know, they, they, they basically were like, they made a, they recalled almost all of them, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. The DeLoreans, they were, they were, they just didn't, they just didn't work. They were quite basically. poor, yeah. A huge, a huge failure. So yeah, so I should be, yeah, maybe I've got to have a little look, maybe I've got to re-examine that aspect of my, uh, I just, whenever I see a thing for like Avengers, a sort of a trailer for Avengers, I just think there's going to be loads of fighting in this that I'm going to find really boring. Yeah. The problem with those films, and I really like them, like I'm a big fan, but... I quite often find watching them, and it especially happens in things like Transformers, they all look the same when they're yeah. fighting. Yeah. They, like, no, I, I don't know who's winning. I just assume the ones that are getting knocked out are probably the bad guys. Yeah, you'll find out at the end of the fight. Yeah. Whichever one gets up and whichever one is, is lying on the ground. Yeah. That's the winner and the loser, respectively. Which is weird for me to not care that much about it because I'm certainly not watching it for the dialogue. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I just find any of those things where people get punched through a wall or, you know, just explosions or stuff like that. I mean, I don't think the things, I don't think that nothing should explode in a film. Yeah. But uh, I just, it just, my, there's a part of my brain that just clicks and I could feel myself drifting off. Yeah. The which thing is, is weird because that's the bit that hooks most people in. Yeah. See, I think if I watch a film that is too real, like if I watch something that is clearly farcical, then yes. I could just sit there and watch that. But if I'm watching something that's too real and then they have something that like can't happen. So, for instance, when a car is driving down a road and like say it's in heartbeat, a car drives into a wall and then explodes. I will sit there <laughs> saying, why would that car explode? Did it have yes. explosives in it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I guess that's true. If you make a film that's so grounded in reality, then you can't do anything. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a guy who is like an archer, and for some reason that's a superpower, then <laughs> all bets are off, really, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's that. You make you make a very very good point because it it's very rare that a something in a superhero movie is going to take you out of it due to a lack of reality. Yeah. You've got to sw- you've got to sort of go through. There's so much sort of um, a cognitive dissonance to get to the fact that you're watching superheroes in the first place. Yeah, anything could happen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've opened the doors to well, nonsense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and embrace it. Utter. Yeah, com- complete imagination. I've just remembered something. In the last recording, yeah. you were going to ask me a question from a book. I was. Do Do you want to Do you want to do that? I will. I feel like we. Yeah. Uh... I, 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 I feel like you know we do, I, I don't want to say like I just I just remember that was that was where we were yeah when when things started to fall apart yeah it's just just when I thought do you know what I'll double check that this is recording and I should have done it earlier that's that's on me that is uh, that's very much on me I should have checked but there you go well I, I you know we, we I should have been recording a backup yeah we just we decided that that wasn't necessary yeah it turns out it was I thought it'd be fine it it was there not you go. it wasn't no right now I've got oh yeah so I'm about to ask. My fiance has just sent me a text. <laughs> now, right, okay, I've got I've got a couple of things because so when I first said that I'd got you as a guest on the podcast, the first thing my fiance said was, "Have you seen this cat?" Because oh yeah, I, I absolutely love cats. Do you? Yeah, Cosmo, my cat. Yeah, yeah, she's very sweet. Yeah, she's, she's exotic, short hair with a sort of flat, disappointed face. Well, that's what I was going to ask because I couldn't quite pinpoint what breed she was. She's lovely. She is lovely, yeah, yeah. She's lovely, and she's she's had a tough time of it recently because moving house very stressful. stressful. Yeah, had to have her vaccinations as well, also stressful. Yeah, and we've had lots of people like 
we had painters to sort of decorate so she's not really had the run of the house to herself plus we have a toddler now who is very rambunctious and excited sure. and doesn't necessarily you know it's not quite of mice and men level but she doesn't know <laughs> how to how to cuddle a cat without yeah. breaking its spine so um so cosmo who used to be our absolute kind of pride and joy baby who you know would would sit between us when we were watching telly of an evening is now a little bit of a sort of uh you know she's not a prisoner in her in her own house but she's 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 walking around a little bit more cautious than she would but yeah. she, has a, she has a great time during the day when my daughter's at nursery and there are no you know there are no other people in the house at the moment yeah. that's great that's when she gets the run of it and the and, and ditto once my daughter's gone to bed yeah, but she yeah so, to she, so her, her disappointed look on her face is all the more disappointed at the moment yeah because she can't it, get to her bowl even more poignant previously yeah. ironic and now just sad yeah exactly exactly yeah. she 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 was just it was a, it was an affectation originally it was more of a you know she was more sort of like a sort of surly teenager and now she's uh, you know a 20 something with with deep on we yeah profound existential angst <laughs> yeah well i mean that happens with most cats at some point i think but that's that's true that's true it's a strange old life being a cat yeah she also is she's also her, we we uh, let her out in the back garden but she's a because she's a quite a sought after breed, and B because they're quite timid cats in the first place. We yeah. don't let her sort of you know run off without supervision. What? But um, she's got she's got a real aggressive side, which oh, we didn't really? realize until quite recently. She's never to us. She's always really lovely and affectionate to us. But if she sees another cat, and we have a house now with kind of big sliding glass doors on the yeah. back of the house, so she can see the entire garden all the time. And anytime she sees another cat, she flings herself like hard yeah. at the at the glass and will like scratch away at the glass trying to sort of attack this this cat. She's got a real now a real temp- my, temper. My my cat and my parents does a very, very similar thing. Like the their house backs onto a field and like if a fox comes into the garden as they often do or badgers or anything, my cat will sit there at the back door and he'll growl and he'll sort of make himself all Yeah. Big. And he is probably the biggest cat on the street as well. But nevertheless, if you open that door for him to go out, he goes mm, no no, no, <laughs> and then just turns around and runs away. So right. he'll, he'll act I, I th- hard. I think Cosmo's got the courage of her convictions because we let her out in the back garden in our last place and she really chased a neighbor's, oh. neighbor's cat away. She okay. really went for it. So she's, I mean, she's small with an attitude. Yeah. As opposed to, what's your, what's your parents' cat called? Marco. Marco. Yeah. Marco and Cosmo, great names. Yeah. I th- when, when you first said that, though, I thought you said my cat and my parents are the same oh like anytime your parents see <laughs> other parents walking past the uh <laughs> yeah, they walking past the house the they like yeah. they like bang their fists on the windows and scream um <laughs> but yeah a very very nice cat if you go on my instagram you can see yes I've irregular seen, photos I've, I've seen of, a few pictures yeah yeah she's, she's great she's so really lovely. the reason i brought that up is yes. my fiance won't let me have a cat in in our oh. in our house. So she sort of is that, is that allergies? Is that just worried about no, the furniture getting doesn't, torn up? Doesn't really like animals. Yeah, she's a bit worried about the furniture getting torn up. So we, we want a breed that will likely not tear our furniture I mean, apart. That's, which I, that's I think kind of all. I think all that breed is really. uh, taxidermied. Yeah, I think that's very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a real shame. Her, but less cuddly. We, we bought her like um, scratching post. In fact, in the in the new place now, we've just bought her like a kind of tower. That yeah. she can kind of sit on and stuff, and she couldn't give less of a f about Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Whereas Nine times the, out of ten, they do not care. No. Whereas the furniture absolutely loves it. Yeah. Absolutely delighted to dig her, her claws into the furniture and tear away at it. Yeah. It's her dream. But uh, so uh, it, the it's reason, a shame. The reason I bring that up is because, like I say, she, uh, she's a fan of your radio show, and I'm reasonably certain that if I could get a soundbite from you saying, get a cat, I should probably do it. Oh, you know what? They are wonderful companions, a cat. They they genuinely are. If you have a cat in the house, especially if you're working from home, it's they they they're wonderful for for anxiety and for stress. They they just they're just great. You know they 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 give a lot of love, especially if you get an affectionate breed. They give a lot of love. They're fun. They're very low maintenance. Yeah, I'll say that as well. You know, it's not like a dog. We have to walk them all the time. You know, you. Uh, they're, they're very happy playing with a feather on a stick you can play with them as much or as, as little as you like they like their own space they're very easy to feed you know you don't have to the, the food itself is not expensive and need loads of stuff and also it's just nice to have you know nice to have someone who will always be around in the house you know if you get in and no one else is in the cat's always in yeah and that's a that's a lovely thing 
And yeah, I think Emma, you'd be a fool not to get yourself a little cat. They're they're really, really they're wonderful companions. It's so nice as well to be sitting, you know, sitting watching the TV of an evening and have them come and snuggle up between the two of you. Absolutely, it's great. Yeah, you know, that's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and I'm clip, gonna clip make it up. her ringtone. Yes, absolutely. A constant reminder: get a cat. Yeah, they're lovely. Yes, they're good. Lovely. That was amazing. That was much more articulate than any argument I've made. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Hopefully that'll work. We'll see. No, you're, you're welcome, Sai. Yeah, thanks very much. Right, now down to other questions. that I've, I'll just yes. see what else I've written down here. Right, now, so the question that came up during the last episode, which was relevant to the previous conversation about how you want to die podcasting. Yes, that's right. And there was something about... I'd, I'd started telling you about, in, in the last episode, my, my guest was telling me a story about how he had a cab driver who could produce smoke from his fingers. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was a healer who could emit smoke from his fingers. Yeah. And that was that was just one of his, his many tricks. Yeah, yeah. And the, the weird thing is, so my friend who was the guest on the last episode, is, uh, oh, well, you may know of the band, actually. They're playlisted on Radio X. It's uh, Asylums. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know Asylums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the singer's a really good friend of mine. I've known him for like 18 years. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Lovely guy. I was a t- sort of tour driver, like tour manager for him for a while. Oh, wow. And may may go back to it because I was made redundant during <laughs> from my day job. So, uh, Oh, I'm really sorry yeah. to hear that. No, that's it's, all right. That's, it's uh, a very tough time. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, a, a tour manager now, are they doing socially distanced gigs? Is that what they're, no. they're trying to do? Well, certainly not in a minute because there's... Uh, uh, no, the, of course, there's, there's a national lockdown on. Yes. But, uh, yeah, hopefully, sort of the, the planning stuff for next year. They've already got... Well, they were supposed to be playing Glastonbury this year, so hopefully they'll be playing next year. And they're doing the Isle of Wight Festival. They've already got that booked in. So, oh, great! Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. what a, what a fun job to be following following a band around. Oh, it's the best. It's absolutely Especially amazing. Especially yeah. when you get on with as well. Yeah, yeah. That's that sounds great because because that's it now. Because of the vaccine, the they say that Glastonbury I mean, not because of the vaccine, but they say that it looks likely that Glastonbury twenty twenty one is slated to go ahead. Yeah, fingers crossed. That'd be amazing. So that would be that would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck to them. Yes, absolutely. So, but anyway, he, so he gets a lot of cabs in this local area. So he sees a lot of the drivers sort of again and again. That mm-hmm. was the only time he's ever seen him and he's disappeared Ooh. after having made the smoke appear from his fingers. So, so literally in a puff of smoke. Yeah. He and did he, was he able to smoke, was he able to produce smoke in front of your friend? Yeah. Yeah, he did it. Yeah. When he pulled up like outside his house, <laughs> he, was, he was asking for the money and then just stopped and went, and sort of squeezed really hard and smoke came out of his fingers right like his fingers were sort of frustrated yeah what well, so which is bizarre well, a weird thing for a because you know you can't smoke in the back of a cab so it's a really weird yeah. thing for a for a cabbie to sort of engineer themselves to be able to do yeah it's a yeah. smoke out the fingers i don't also i don't see how that's beneficial to anyone no it isn't it's not beneficial to anyone I mean, unless you know and I think I said this when you mentioned it last time, but I, um, unless it's, you know, you've got a wasp nest yeah. or something, you know, one of those sort of things you've got to, you've got to use smoke to kind of get rid of a load of in- insects or something. Yeah, yeah. Make bees more docile. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but no, it's, it, it doesn't seem like a, uh, I mean, I suppose if you wanted to, if you wanted a quick demonstrable thing that you had magical powers. That'll do it. That's, yeah. That's kind of like your calling card, isn't it? It's not necessarily the thing that helps anybody, but it, you know, help can take a long time. You yeah. can say, I'm a healer, but look, I can't heal. I'm not like, you know, Jesus laying on hands on the leper. This healing is going to take a while. It might take yeah. several, several sessions. So look, let's have, look at these, you know, fingers emitting smoke. Does that give you an idea that I'm not just your average, yeah, that's you exactly know, that. salesman? Yeah. Um, so, I, go on. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously the, the big, the big thing here is he can't do that. Yeah, that's that's not what anyone's able to do. He can't do it. So what's he doing instead? But he and did also it in front of three people. Sure, but he's do, he's doing something, isn't he? Yeah, he's not. He's not and I, you know, uh, I am very willing to believe new agey bullshit. But yeah, a man emitting smoke from his fingers. I just he's done something. He's got some sort of trick that he's playing on his. Yeah, or because also he's if very he was, unwell. Yeah, I mean, spontaneous combustion used to be a, a big thing, didn't it? Yeah. You, you used to read about that quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a big now, concern you know, of mine. Yeah, I, I think I think anyone who's kind of are 
our age, you know, within a, within a, I imagine we're, we're, we're about 10 years apart. Five years. Um, we, are we five years apart? Yeah, there you go. I'm older than I look. Yeah, you, yeah, you have got, well, it's because most of your head has been reconstructed. Yes, I'm 45. So it's, you, right. No. Are you, are you honestly? No, no, you, I'm 35. Say, the other way. I was going to say for a second, you look amazing. <laughs> but no, 35, you look, you look good. I'm not going to say great, you look good. But, I'll take um, it. But yeah, that seemed to be a big thing. Yeah spontaneous combustion people just going up in so maybe he's managed to tap into whatever it was that made people spontaneously combust but control it oh an interesting superpower so yeah he's got a thing that could eventually destroy him yeah but through the power of mind over matter he has managed to harness it in such a way that he can just demo it at the end of cab rides yeah it also feels like if you're if you're magic you know Right, Yuri Geller has made a career out of selling himself as magic. Yeah. Or, you know, with paranormal activities, abilities even. But... Sorry to pause you right there. Uh, I desperately no. need to run for a wee. You go cool. for a wee. I'll keep right, talking. I'll be, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Okay, no, no, please don't worry. Here we go. Right, well, Sai has gone for a wee, which just leaves uh, you and I, uh, the listener. So, we were talking about Yuri Geller. Now, here's the thing with Yuri Geller. He is a man who has styled himself as a, a guru, as a man who has psychic and paranormal abilities greater than your average Joe. So if he was also, you know, running a chippy, you'd doubt his credentials, I think it's fair to say. You'd doubt that he was actually the, the true sort of magic man that he claims to be because he's also having to make ends meet through other financial means. So I feel like that is the thing that prevents me from believing this cab driver actually is a, a true mystic, a true a true magic man. Because if he was a true mystic and a true magic man, you know, he wouldn't need to be making fares through the through cabbing. Anyway, I've, I've explained my theory on uh, Yuri Geller. Simon's Ooh, back now. Here. I'm going to be interested to hear that when I you, you, when you listen when you listen back. Yeah. yeah, it was quite it was quite a weird experience there. I was trying to just you know because because ordinarily when you're podcasting, I know there are people who do the podcast where they just sit down in front of the microphone and start talking. Yeah, and an amazing skill. Oh yeah, I think an amazing skill. I know I know you know a, a few stand ups do it. I know Bill Burr does that. I don't know if he still does it, but he's mon- he's Monday morning where he just starts talking. And I know Mike Schmidt, the 40-year-old boy, does it as well. But I think, how do you do it when you haven't got the the audience to, to sort of, you know, to bounce yeah. off of? Or even just to when, you know, when you feel like you're running out of thoughts, which sometimes happens, you start a thought and you go, I haven't got the, I haven't got another thought coming <laughs> at the end of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. What's, who's going to help me out I suppose there? you just start listing your shopping. Yeah, but how entertaining is that? I think, we, you know, luckily I, I had a thought in my head that lasted about as long as it took you to go and have a wee. So it was fine. I was able to, to, I was able to do that. But I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm glad you came back when yeah. you did. You know, if you'd left me for the... Not a, again, not a bad experiment for a podcast. Where <laughs> just walk off. Let's you, see, see you, you book a guest. Yeah, again, it's the, it's almost the opposite of what you of your other suggestion. Where it's just you, you start the conversation, you ask him a question, and you say, I'm, "I'm I'm so sorry, I need to pop to the loo. Would you mind just finishing your thoughts and yeah. just see how long they would how long they'd keep talking?" There are certain people I've I've definitely you know we've had pe- people on our podcast that you you ask them a question. And you could come back 45 minutes later and they'd still be talking. <laughs> yeah. I'm sort of not quite that person, but I'm close to it. Yeah. But anyway, yes. So smoke, smoke coming out yes. of his fingers. So, But he also drives a cab. And yeah. And uh, crucially, he, he's never seen him since. He's disappeared. Yeah. So my question to maybe you. It's, maybe his maybe it's smoke's taken off. Maybe the maybe the, the guruing thing has, has sort of finally clicked into place. He's starting to get enough custom. He doesn't well, need to wear the cab on Quite the... possibly. That'd be a lovely story, wouldn't it? A lovely turnout. I hope so. I hope, I hope so for uh, him. Yeah. My, my question sort of suggests uh, otherwise because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all. No, I mean, we're we're actually thinking if he has managed to, uh, if he has managed to make a career out of being a guru, it means he's fleecing people out of their hard-earned oh, yeah. money, isn't it? So let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. What's your What's your question? Right. If you had to die of evaporation, mm. uh, what part of you would you want to evaporate first? That's a great question. Yeah. So now the the typical thing you see in a movie when people sort of disappear is the hands go first. Yeah. Because they're the bit you can hold in front of your face. Yeah. So visually, it's very good for a hand to disappear. You bring your hand up to your face and it slowly turns into steam. 
so in terms of like other people witnessing it that would be you know if you're if you're if you're th- if you're thinking of the audience yeah ever the showman do you want to start with hands <laughs> um equally legs would be pretty good because then you go there's well there's a definite end point here and that's my head yeah but you get to see every bit of it and yeah you know the i wor- don't know if it'd be painful well the, the worst bit is well pain pain or no you'd be screaming if you looked oh, yeah. down and you know out of your dm boots was emitting some steam and then you could slowly <laughs> slowly see that the you know actually here's the thing how much would it look like anything was happening what what would happen would you fall to the ground because if your feet have gone, you're not standing up anymore. Are you falling to the ground and then you're lying on your back and the rest of your body is just kind of disappearing out through the, the yeah, seams of your clothes? It would look like you're melting into the ground. It would look like you're melting into the ground, yeah. And Because uh, I think the thing about it travelling up the body is, if it was a horror movie, scream, 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 all the way up the body, scream up the arms, scream up the, up the torso, scream yeah. to the neck, and then, of course, the scream would stop. Yeah, because the vocal cords would would have fade into oblivion. Yeah, the, the the vocal cords would have would have evaporated exactly, but your eyes would still be. So then, all of the anguish expiring through evaporation would be transferred to your eyes. That would just be poof, they'd be like you know wide, yeah. and then they would disappear, and then it would just be the, the top of your head, and you know the scalp lift. People a little bit a little bit of scalp, and then eventually that turns into into moisture as well and there'd be obviously you'd you'd hope there'd be people running around with pyrex dishes trying to get as much (laughs) of you as possible sort of cram it into tupperwares and stuff and and where i mean where do you keep it you put it in the fridge those that turns into ice can you turn him back you know you don't want to get get it you've got to keep it in a warm condition but if you get it too hot then that's all gonna yeah Yeah. it's it's, otherwise those people are gonna breathe it in as well oh absolutely yeah you know we know this from the way that the uh the 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 virus is transferred that we're constantly breathing in other people's water particles you know constant vapor is passing from person to person yeah if somebody exclaims loudly the chances are as well you've breathed some of yourself in self in yeah you your scream every time way out yeah your scream was probably taking your shins in through your you know through your gullet (laughs) You turn into a tornado of, your, of yourself. Yeah, you know that that's not a bad way to go. To, to go if you're going to turn into a tornado. So what? So, but but like, if if you're going to push me for an answer, I think <laughs> I th- and I and I, am. and I think you. I, I can tell you are. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go legs first because I want to yeah. see it. Because also as well, say for example, I'm with a doctor friend who goes, "Oh, don't don't worry. I've seen this before. We can stop this." Yeah. I would be much, much happier if he stopped it and I no longer had my feet than if he stopped it and I was missing the top half of my head. Yeah, yeah I that's think, a fair point. I think, you know, I, I, you know I've, I've got friends with prosthetics. They're amazing, you know, yeah. both the friends and the prosthetics. So uh, <laughs> there are things you can do nowadays, whereas I've never met anybody, a present company excluded, with a prosthetic head. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm going I'm to go feet. What about you? I well, now that you've pointed out the opportunity for it to be reversed, obviously the dream is that I, I'm next to a freezer, a walk-in freezer, yeah. and then I can walk in, slow it down myself. However, if it can't be reversed, brain. Right. So you just don't suffer at all. You don't realise yeah. it's happening. Your brain evaporates. Over. Your brain evap- evaporates out of your ears and your nostrils. Yeah. And then the rest of you just again mists off into the sky. Yeah, absolutely. Also, from a, a visual point of view, for anyone watching, they would just see me slowly become vacant. Yeah, you just yeah. you you just you dis you disappear, and then you know, presumably all the you know, like your your tongue would steam out of your mouth, and your eyes would steam out of your eye sockets, and yeah, yeah, it would be it'd be quite a sight to see. Yeah, I terrifying. Think, I think yeah, I I think I'm I've added a caveat that may not be within the remit of the question, which is. I'm hoping that I'm going to be close to someone who's going to be able to to stop it. Well, that's the beauty of these questions is that they are open to interpretation and suggestion. So, great. I, well, I'm, I like I'm, it. I'm sticking with my answer, and it's great. It's good that we haven't gone for the same thing. If you'd gone yeah feet as well, then it would. You know, there's no there's yeah. no podcast there. No, no one wants to hear that. Exactly. Uh, I imagine the the dream if your feet are going first, so that it doesn't look like that you're melting into the ground, is that you're you're hanging off of like an RSJ or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, although it just depends if it travels up your neck at the same rate it travels up your arms. Yeah. Because if it's if it, for example, goes up your arms first and it hasn't gone all the way up to the top of your head, then your head is going to start plummeting. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
but I, yeah, but, you... I, but I guess if you if you sort of see the arms being above the head as being the last bit to go, then yeah, if you're on a yard arm, fine, <laughs> that would be all right. Yeah, until eventually it's just a pair of hands, and then yeah, and the, and then and, uh... and then nothing, <laughs> and then nothing but a memory. Bleak nothingness, and you've podcasted the whole thing, so that of course, uh, of course, yeah, yeah, that's it. As I as I said, I want to die of podcasting. So as soon yeah. as I, as soon as my feet started to steam, I would <laughs> crack I would out the recorder, fire out, fire up the Zoom recorder, and just just start monologuing. Yeah, if, sure. if I'm lucky enough to have you know the other members of Pappies or Ed Gamble next to me at the time, great. It's the All dream. the better. All the better. Absolutely. You know, obviously, I'm leaving them in in a very similar situation to the situation you left me, except with no ending to it. Yeah. If I'm if I do halfway through the radio show dissolve into steam ed's gonna have to do the rest on his own yeah he would he would he'd Although he's got he's got he's got vin he'll, he's he'll, a proficient he can do he can broadcaster. do it. he can he could do a grand yeah, job yeah yeah absolutely he'll be fine yeah almost, te- almost tempted to do it now vin would play the penis fly trap exactly yeah it's, by it yeah, over and over yeah, yeah this would it would all work out yeah it's yeah it's all fine good cool the other ones are largely tea based. I can I can uh, answer a couple of tea based questions. Yeah, what's what's your favourite tea? Because obviously, yeah, as we've learned, it's not an English breakfast. No, it's not. I mean, I, I didn't dislike tea when I used to drink it. It just got to a point when I was like, I, I I've got the measure of this. I know what this is about. Yeah, I don't need any more. It doesn't I, change much. No, no, it doesn't. What's my favourite tea? I mean, you, you know what? It's gonna be. It's going to be something like a three ginger tea or, you know, something that's got a bit of a kind of bite to it. Yeah. Have you got got somebody just off screen that's uh, demanding your attention? Yeah, my fiance is doing some kind of sign language. (laughs) Oh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. It's the same thing that she texts me about. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) What's what's the question that that is is so burning? Right. Well, that actually, yeah, now that it's come up. So I, I asked on Facebook if anyone had any questions. And, oh, great. Uh, and a previous guest, John Oakes, who you may or may not have heard of the sketch group Giraffe. That I, were, I've, were, I've, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were pretty big in Edinburgh a few years ago. Yes. And they sort of various things happened. He's, uh, he's a very proficient oh, what, what, what do you mean uh, ver- various things happened? Oh, like George went off to go and do loads of acting. Ah, and, okay. Right, uh, right. Ali, John's now wife, became a teacher. and She's now in Showstoppers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's all gone very well. But, oh, that's so good. John, you, made it, you made it seem like, you know, members of them had evaporated. But Oh, uh, no, no, no. no, no all, small, small amounts of evaporation, but largely they're fine. Great. But, yeah, so he, he asked some questions. He actually asked what he described as a barrage of questions. Great. So I'm, I'm going to work my way through them. So the first question he asked was, how was the transition going from sketch writing to stand-up? I don't know why I did the quotes, but... I did. I always did them. I always did them sort of concurrently. I started both in two thousand and four. So yeah. I've never. It's never been a transition. It's always like you know. You just have it. You have an idea, and you think, well, where would that be best placed to go? You know. And if it's an idea that in, that involved two other people, <laughs> then it became a sketch idea. <laughs> and if it was yeah. one, I, one I could con- kind of communicate. So it was, there was never like any. I don't think it was ever a, ever a sort of transition, really. Um, yeah. And uh, a lot of, you know, a lot. I guess, I guess maybe he put sketch writing and stand up writing in quotes, is because a lot of a lot of it would happen. I, I sort of wish I hadn't done as much as I did when I when I first started. But a lot of it would happen on stage. I'd half think of a funny idea and go on stage and start talking about it, which yeah. is good in some cases if you've got a great audience and l- tons of inspiration. But ultimately, it's usually better if you just if you spend a bit more time writing it down. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I tend to I'll I'll write to an extent where I will work out the landmarks. Yes, I think know? that's and I think the, that's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to overwrite your stand up and you know have to say it word for word. It feels like you're reading a script. No, because you get stuck in it, and sometimes like you'll write something down in, in a way that you wouldn't say it out loud. So exactly, yes, yeah. But that's how it's that's how it's different. Is he is he is he starting stand up now? Is he or is he? Is he no, going he's from... always done stand up actually, sort of of varying degrees. He now does an act where he improvises rap. Oh, okay. Right. Great. Like based on sort of loop pedal stuff, and then yeah, and then yeah, yeah. It's really good. It's really good fun. He's doing well with that. He's doing. He does loads of stuff though. He's an annoyingly talented man. But he did. Um, 
what's it called? He did a, he did an immersive theatre thing in in Edinburgh. Oh wow! Two years ago, that was incredible. Yeah, it's another thing that like if you think theatre is going to take a long time to come back, immersive theatre is going to take even longer, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you can't I, get I, close I had to no anybody. idea what it was. It sounded like absolute nonsense, and then I went to see it, and it was the best thing that I'd seen. I think. Yeah, I like that sort of stuff where you're sort of exploring the show for yourself. Yeah, like the kind of stuff that is it Punch Drunk do it? They do those. Yeah, yeah, those those those, those big shows where everyone's wearing masks and yeah. you know, no one knows who are the actors and who are the punters. Except yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You always kind of know. Yeah, the the actors are the ones that are good at it. That's yeah, exactly. The, yeah, yeah. It's generally the difference. Yeah. Next question he asked, oh, was it easy or hard? Do you have a preference? And do slash did you write for a particular style or performer when writing for pappies? So I suppose that's the next question. Do you, do you write for a particular style or performer when writing for pappies? I write for, I mean, when I write for, when, when, when we, I mean, we'd always kind of write together, but we, we'd write it for ourselves, really. I mean, I, I, I guess, yeah. I, I think we got to a stage when we were writing sketches where we knew we, 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 we'd come up with a funny line. You start with a joke and you go, well, that can only be said by this person. Or right. Can, yeah. You know, if you've got, I think our, our personas, our onstage personas were clearly defined enough that we were able to do it. And I think there was very rarely any arguments as to, well, I should say that line. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't think anyone, and, and that's, that was quite good as well, that it led to us being quite sort of, we, I mean, obviously there's lots of egos when you, when you work with other people, but yeah. it was, it was, an, it was an easy way of circumnavigating any kind of, you know, egotistical head button. Cause you went, well, I, only I can say this. Yeah. Only yeah, you can say yeah. that. It wouldn't make sense if you said this. So that's, that's kind of the way we did it. Nice. So yeah, you just found it best to lean into your personalities. Yeah. And just, you know, like. I think I think actually one of the things that sort of probably we got that we probably stopped the reason we stopped doing it one of the reasons we stopped doing it with such regularity and sort of moved to the more you know doing podcasts and that kind of stuff a was time we just didn't have enough time to kind of get together and write and b was we felt like we'd kind of exhausted the possibilities of those personalities because they weren't right. actually our you know they, they they were never our personalities they were sort of ramped up versions of the personalities we had at at, tw- yeah. at 25 when we first started yeah. and then eventually you go like well I don't I don't feel like this person anymore so I'm, it's, it became harder and harder to pretend to be that person yeah yeah interesting thanks mm, see that's a good thing I think about obviously sort of doing stand up as myself is as I've changed as a person my personality on stage has also yeah. changed with it so I think that's a really important thing to do as well and I think sometimes at my worst when I was doing stand up was when I was trying to force a persona that didn't belong yeah, yeah, to me yeah 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 we've all you done know, it when I was going oh I, I think it would be funny if I th- acted like this or if I yeah. imagined I'd behave like that but never you know it never is the audience can see the audience can tell if you're being y- yeah yeah even if you're you know like even if you are being someone like Milton Jones or James A. Caster, someone who's a character, a real character on stage. Yeah. If you're not being authentic to that character, people spot it. People copy yeah, it yeah. really, really, really easily. Like sort of a Troy Hawk doing. Wait, which is the character? Milo McCabe. Milo McCabe's uh, the guy. Yeah, Troy yeah. Hawk's the character. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. So when he does Troy Hawk, like the character that he portrays is always that character, and it's yeah, it's great. He does it amazingly well. Yeah, uh, and I think you know, like the stuff he would want to do as himself, you know, as in his own stand up wouldn't work with the character and yeah, and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, much like sort of uh, Alexis Dubis and, uh, and Marcel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Fascinating. That is genuine. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that's quite cool to be able to sort of develop a character in such a way that it becomes its own personality. And yeah. that's, that's where I think things often end. Like there's a couple of sort of character acts who I don't want to name names, but they feel sort of shallow and that they've got a shelf life because yeah they, absolutely you know. you know like i think it used to happen a lot in the competitions when i was starting out where you'd get this brilliant you know someone who, who was a brilliantly realized character who yeah. worked amazingly over five or ten minutes yeah and then you'd see them because they'd done well in competitions getting booked for 20s and going oh yeah actually 20 minutes of this seems mad yeah, yeah you know yeah. it's because you've it's because you've distilled everything that makes that character funny into Five ten minutes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, what an incredible skill it must be to have that. I, I am. 
<laughs> I'm very much this person on stage and off. So. But that's great. I mean, that's also. I mean, that's that's a that's. Also oh, it works genu- in my favour. Yeah. A genuine I, skill, isn't it? You know, to be able to, if you can go on stage and talk like you talk off stage, brilliant. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I, I generally plan what I say in advance. No, of course, stage. of course, that's, you that's do. That's but... the, that is very much the difference between real life side aids and, and uh, on stage side aids. But otherwise, personality wise. It's it's just me. It's very it's you know it's it makes it easy to mine and stay in character because it's just this. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you are if you have got to you know change the script or work with something in the room, you're never going okay. What would yeah? What, what would, would he what, say? What would this crazy person I've invented say? You'd be like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've already had that thought. I'll yeah. say it out loud. Fingers crossed, people like it. Yeah. Cool. Good. Right. Is live sketch comedy dead now that social media does it so well slash differently? No, I think live sketch comedy is dead because of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, that is... That's uh, the reason that's it's the, dead. <laughs> <laughs> the most succinct answer possible, yeah. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. I don't think it is anyway. I, I think there's still no, a lot no, of no, no. amazing like, stuff to come out. W- one of the most infuriating things that we used to deal with all the time was we would get... Because also, like, telly was around... W- w- you know, telly's yeah. been, a- been around doing sketch comedy well, when we were, were doing uh, our sketch comedy. It's not like the... No one would have worked out any other way of doing sketch comedy apart from live. But one of the most infuriating things that used to happen quite a lot were when I was sort of doing Edinburgh and stuff like that is you'd get you'd get people writing articles to be like, you know, sketch comedy's back or the reason why sketch comedy is, you know, come to life again. And I'd always be asked to sort of do interviews for these uh, articles. And they'd say, so what do you think sketch comedy's suddenly back? And I'd go, well, look, let's look at the sort of trajectory of the last... 10 years yeah and there's, there's never been a period when it's not been a big success in edinburgh you yeah know? I'm, I'm you know on television certainly we haven't had a big successful sketch show outside of kids tv in years but that's because yeah. it's very very expensive to film sketch shows to a television standard and i think what's good about internet comedy is that you get somebody like al green alistair green who is one of my absolute favorite it was always been one of my favorite comedians i did my first edinburgh mixed bill show with him as a stand-up I think he's brilliant and his sketches are about as lo-fi as it's possible to do. You know, it's just yeah. him, him, white background, talking into his phone. Um, yeah. And they're, they're amazing and they're brilliant. But I think to say that sort of thing is killing live sketch comedy, I think is not true. There will, yeah. you know, there, there are big sketch acts who, who go up and smash Edinburgh every year. That's, 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 I don't think that's ever going to change except for the fact that, Edinburgh might drastically change because yeah of the of the global pandemic. Yes, that, yeah, it's called certainly caused issues this year. It has a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, but you know, fingers crossed, it will make it more affordable in the future if people have time to sort of think about the great more reset. Of that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, the great reset. Absolutely. So yeah, fingers crossed, it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. Is <laughs> no, it? no, 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 sure. no. It's absolutely awful thing for the world and of course the arts within the world. Yeah, but um, but I think. Ed- something needs to change in Edinburgh, and that's a yeah, that's a bigger absolutely. conversation, and it's a horrible thing that, you know, people who want to do, the, you know, if you, if you was if if I was if you were starting out as a comedian now, what a tough time it must be. It um, is, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I'm I'm not particularly established as such. Yeah, I've been going I've been going long enough, and I'm 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 getting paid and all sorts, but yeah, uh, yeah, fighting for those uh, fighting to rise above others when there's just hundreds of yeah. hundreds of comedians in the same space as me yeah absolutely. another advantage of staying outside of london yeah absolutely you, you know you can you can clean up on the on the south end on sea yeah circuit oh yeah i've got I've got my name all over it i bet you have yeah <laughs> right do you hate the fringe or love it oh i love it i absolutely yeah. love it yeah i mean i don't know I, so, some of my absolute happiest memories and also kind of i owe my career to the, starting out at the at the fringe like, some of my best friends i've m- made up there yeah, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I, I know there are plenty of comedians who dislike it and it's incredibly gruelling. And I think you only yeah. ever feel as good as the last show you did. And my last show was a while ago now. It's five years ago. But I, I, yeah, I mean, it's ama- It's just an amazing, thrilling way to spend a month and a really good, it makes you, you know, it, it absolutely makes you a better comic. Absolutely. It, it's, yeah. there's, there's nothing like it in terms of honing your ability. And if you're writing a, you know, if you're writing a new hour of stand up every year, or a new hour of sketch or whatever, that's making you a better writer. Oh, yeah. You know, of course, it's, it's, you know, those people who say you don't need to bother going up to Edinburgh are often people who have been peddling the same 20-minute set yeah. since 1997. Yeah. And why would you want to do that? Why would you want to 
be doing the exact same, th- you know, in the same way that we got, you know, I say we got bored of our personas. We also weren't churning, churning out new material. And we got yeah. bored of, of doing the same sketches we'd written in, you know, I think the last stuff we wrote was in about 2013, 14. So when we were, when we were still gigging in like 2016, 17, we were just bored of the stuff. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a good excuse to, and even if you get, even if you write a new hour and 20 of that works in clubs, brilliant. It's great. You've got oh, a new club yeah. 20 for a year. And it means that if someone calls you up, you know, six months down the line and says, can you come back and do the club again? You're not going and performing to the same people with yeah. the material that they saw six months ago. Yeah, absolutely. Why, you know, why wouldn't you have the fringe? It's great. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the, what's the uh, quite nice thing about that is I, I'm, I'm quite a prolific writer in that, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not all gold, but I write a lot. That's uh, good. I mean, yeah, of course, it's, it's never, no, one, no one's writing all gold. No, but... Obviously, the nice thing is, uh, like, I was working on a show anyway, and then all this stuff happened with my eye. So I've got like two oh, yeah. sort of shows worth of stuff and combine it all together. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice. That's so great. The, uh, ultimately, what's annoying is I've got like all of this material and then two really cool titles for shows. Yeah, what uh, I was going to ask because obviously, you know, let's let's hear the, let's hear the title. So what's your, what's your eye show going to be called? Cyclops. Love it. I was going to go eye eye captain. Uh, ah, the poster yeah. is you with you know dressed as a sailor with two eye patches. Yeah. Um, but um, but I think Cyclops works better. It's yeah. cooler. Yeah. It's certainly yeah, cooler. It's a, it's a nice pun. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's relevant because I was blind in one eye for quite a while. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, since then, like I've also had a cataract and all sorts. It's been uh, it's been a whole experience. He's called Cy. He's got one eye. The show writes itself. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not to say that you don't, of course, write fantastic material around it, but um, no, I don't need to. It does write itself. Yeah, it's uh, very handy. The other one is OC Deves. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Oh, it's great yeah, if so, you if you can pun on both halves of your name. Yeah, that's great. It's really good. I've never really done puns on Matthew or Crosby. Never really, yeah. you know. And I like a pun, but I've not. I really... can't do puns. That's the thing. Like I can never do puns, but every now and then I'll think of one, and that'll be my show title. Well, and an, an Edinburgh comedian only needs one a year, and it needs to be based yeah. around their name. That's all it is. Yeah, I've got. Well, I've got another one lined up as well. No, have I? No, that's my old show, uh, last show, which I haven't done much with. So technically, it's still sort of an active show. Yeah, as uh, size matters. Great. You see, size it, it really really works. Size. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a single syllable. Plenty of rhymes with it. It it works great. It's fortunate. Um, how many? So just to ask, I I realised but we've we've ne- it's now nearly five o'clock. Oh yeah, and we've been talking for a while. We have been talking for a while, and I've I've enjoyed the hell out of it. It's been a wonderful experience, but I do have to go and pick my daughter up from nursery very soon. Yes, fair enough. Um, um, d- does jo- does Johnny Boy have any more questions? He has. Let's smash through him quickly. I tell you um, what, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give quick answers. Should we just do yeah. that? Let's let's blast. Oh through. yeah. Sorry, sorry, quick John. Quick fire round. You can you can give him my personal email if he wants any follow up questions. I'll. Uh, <laughs> So we've got favourite joke you've ever heard, which is a big one, but... Oh, my God. Favourite joke I've ever heard. That's... Again, I I was hoping it would be like, you know, do you like the fringe again? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I can move on from that. What's my favourite joke I've ever heard? I heard... This is... It's bad when the joke that pops into your head is a joke that's a bit grubby, but we were talking... We were talking about... um, Myself and some of the other writers on The Last Leg the other day were talking about Anthony Jeselnik. And how, again, it's that thing, you know, it's, it's talking about the persona of a person. He yeah. is such a horrible, he's got such a horrible persona that the jokes he makes, although they're really harsh, you kind of accept that they come from his horrible brain. Yeah. And he, he did a joke that I really, that really, really made me laugh. It was, um, I got a hand job from a girl with OCD. It was the best minute of my life and then the worst 11. <laughs> and I think that is a very, it's just like jokes that paint a really clear and horrible image yeah um, yeah that's nice next question favorite joke you've ever written oh man i don't know the joke that has served me the longest i'll tell you that yeah because i've always written i, I, I was a teacher for a while and i've always written jokes i've always written material about experiences of being a teacher because right. i was only a teacher for a few years but loads of awful stuff happened oh yeah so i would always preface it by doing this joke which let's see if i have Hell, this is the first time I would have told a joke out loud in probably about, I mean, like a joke joke, a stand-up joke, yeah, yeah. in like 18 months. So I think that's when my last gig was. So as a teacher, you've got to look after the kids, both as, you know, pastorally, 
as well as their educational needs. And a horrible situation happened when a 15-year-old girl that I was teaching came up to me and said those words you just don't want to hear as a teacher. She said, um, me and my boyfriend are going to have a baby. That's awful. It's my boyfriend and I are going to have a baby. <laughs> so there you go. That was, and oh, I, nice. I, think I, I think that was one of the first jokes I ever wrote when I was probably just starting out like in sort of 2004, 2005. And yeah. I, I, I was, I would still do it in stand up sets in like 2000. I mean, I've, I probably did it in the last, you know, I probably did it in 2017, 18. Yeah. So, so there we it's go. It's a cracker. As the guy who's like, you know what? These guys who were still churning out the same jokes and here I am <laughs> going, well, I did write that in 2006. Anyway, sorry. What yeah. was, what was, what was I, your one? I always reserve the right to uh, be a hypocrite. So it's fine. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Do, do as I say, not as I do. That's the, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's. Um, I think that's totally. I think that's that's totally the way that comedy should work. Everybody's yeah. got these rules of comedy, but they're there to be consistently broken by the people who made them. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I was just going to say that that's very much my flavour of comedy. Is that is uh, Yeah. I, 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 I do a lot. Of, I do a lot about grammar and being being a pedant. So Great. yeah. Right. And the the final question that is written, it's got a bit of a sort of a, an addition at the end because he said, "Where do you sit to watch a comedy show?" brackets we accidentally sat too close in edinburgh one year for matthew crosby is matthew crosby in the matthew crosby show oh and he yeah us, which i find difficult as a performer right oh right so tricky in that room because it was only a small room and kind of everywhere was too close if i know the performer i you know you know what i tend to sit at the back yeah. generally i tend to sit at, I, I, I you know i tend to sit at the back if if it's a decent i mean most edinburgh venues you know there's 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 usually decent seats far enough back. I don't like to chat to uh, you know I love chatting to the audience when I'm performing. I don't like yeah. to I don't like to. You have to I think. God, how do you say this in a way that doesn't make you sound like a twat? <laughs> that your job isn't to be you, your job as an audience member is to facilitate their jokes, not to make your own jokes. Yeah, so yeah. So you've got yeah, to yeah. switch off that part of your brain that goes. I've got a funny thing I'd like to say here. Yeah. So you just like if they ask you what job you do. You tell them what job you do. You don't come up yeah. with that, you know, you know, you don't come up with a boob inspector style job because it shuts everything down. They can't, you know, they know you're lying. Everyone in the audience knows you're lying. Yeah. All they can do is take the piss out of you for, for lying. You have to just be as, you, you're, you're basically playing the straight man there. Yeah. Trust the comedian to do the comedian's job. Exactly. So I don't like it if I'm in a gig and a comic says, hey, what's your name? You know, all this kind of, what, what, what do you do? Because, yeah. you know, it's that's not, they, they, they don't want me to answer that question. They want somebody who's going to have a fun job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at the back, that is a, it's a good suggestion. I think so, yeah. Also, whenever I go to see any comedy show, if I'm not on, because I'm so sort of constantly running around and doing all sorts and thinking about all sorts of things, whenever I go to see a comedy show, it, it doesn't matter if it's a comedian that I hate or like my favourite comedian in the world. Chances are I will fall asleep for about thirty seconds at some point. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just get drowsy and I, it's the, especially in Edinburgh. You know those warm rooms. Maybe you've maybe you've had a beer at sort of six in the afternoon. And it feels like it, it's going to be okay, but it sort of isn't. You know, it's like it, that's that's so bad, and you don't want to see somebody. I, I I once got a friend's show. I once got very drunk at a at a party before their show. It was like a yeah. birthday party. It was like a boozy lunch. We, we, we went out for a boozy lunch. I ended up going for dinner with my wife and having another couple of large glasses of wine and then went to this gig. And there was definitely a point where my eyes were sort of shutting. And they, oh, yeah. and they called me on it the next day. They were like, oh, did you fall asleep? And I was like, oh, um, actually, I was I, I was quite pissed. And I, which also yeah, is yeah. That's no better. No, <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't disrespect you enough to fall asleep, but um, I did disrespect you enough to get hammered before I watched your comedy. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. The only time that's ever really backfired on me, like I've only ever been co uh, called out on it once, was I was watching my friend Tom Ward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And like, I absolutely love him. I think he's brilliant. But it was just one of those, like, I just got drowsy sitting and I was right in the middle of the room. Sure. Uh, like yeah, sort of to course. one side. And no one's ever brought it up before, but I just heard him say, and there's my friend Si, he's asleep. And I was like, oh no. Oh man, yeah. My, when I, when I went, oh, when I, in fact, when I was doing that very show that, that, uh, that John was talking about there, my friend Josh Whittacombe came to see it and he brought his partner, now wife. Yeah. And... I could tell something had gone wrong at some point with her. She ha she was either very hungover or she was had food poisoning or something. And she was sat at the back. And because you're looking at the audience and you're 
probably checking your friends a lot more than you're checking the rest of the audience. Yeah, I actually sure. had to stop the show and I was like, Rose, are you okay? And she's like, I'm not okay. It's like, right, <laughs> clear it, you know, <laughs> clear a gangway. We're getting Rose out of the vet. Like, it was fine. But I'm really pleased I did it because oh, no. so much better. Because she was clearly, like, I could tell something was going on and she was, she was you know, she went, went home, went, went to bed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it would have been far worse if I'd ignored it and gone, that's fine. Because there's no one else in the, you know, like she didn't want to be impolite to leave the show because if she left, it would be obvious, to, you know, it's an it's yeah. a 80-seater Edinburgh venue. She'd have to walk basically across the stage to leave. Yeah. But uh, I'm really pleased it happened because the worst thing would have been if we just left it and she'd spewed over the back of someone's head. yeah. Oh god! Yeah, or, or, or sh- herself, or, or sh- sh- herself. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's none of it's good. No kind of sort of bodily expulsion is what you want. No, there's there's no good way out of that. Other than what you did, you you, you played it perfectly. I, I, well done. You know what? I'm, you know what? I may not be the funniest guy, but I never lose my manners. <laughs> you are the most conscientious. Very conscientious, yeah. exactly. Right. I I've got one one more question. One more to question. Ask you. Let's let's do uh, it. Let's do this it. This is this is a, a a tea party special. Great. When you did drink tea, did you dunk biscuits? And what's your favourite biscuit? Oh, you know what? I drink coffee now. I drink decaf coffee, and I still dunk. I still dunk biscuits in that. I think there's some there's yeah. a real pleasure to a dunked biscuit. However, the, yeah. the biscuit I think the one the ones I like the most are the caramel digestives, the caramel chocolate oh, digestives. Yeah. Do you know those ones? And the reason why they're such a good dunking biscuit is because you've got the digestive on one side, you've got the chocolate on the on the top. That's great, but the caramel not only provides flavour but it provides structural integrity. Yeah, it does. So. It, it means that your biscuit is not going to... You can dunk for ages. You can really soak up that hot drink, pull it out. It's still going to... It might have a bit of a waver to it, but it's not going to flop and form a sort of soggy paste at the bottom. So it's the perfect dunking biscuit. I don't know why it's not sold as such. Yeah, that should be on the packet. It should be. The perfect the perfect dunker. There are loads of biscuits that call themselves dunkers that have got like a thick layer of chocolate on them. And that's fine. But car- caramel, it's, it's basically... It's literally food glue. It's the glue of the confectionery world. Yeah. I don't know why they're not saying this is a this is a biscuit glued together with flavour. Those people are idiots. I know. But you Maybe know we should uh, start a company or something. I think, this, I think we should. I think that the, yeah. at, at the very least. We've got a lot out of today. Oh, we really have, yeah. A lot of, a lot of talk about death. but uh, it's, Sure. It's been, I mean, quite a lot it, of it was on the bit that happened before. But you know what? It's a reality of life, you know. You can't... Yeah. It's going to happen to it's the it's the you know the the only inevitability death and taxes. Yeah. I might leave that bit in actually and just re-record your side of it. In yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do your voice. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, I'm v- very imitable. Yeah, it's always been always my problem. <laughs> um, but Sai, it's been such a it's been such a pleasure chatting to you. Um, yes, absolutely. Likewise, yeah, it really has. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on, man. It's a total pleasure. I, I've had I had a real fun, uh, real fun chat with you. I'm sorry I have to. I mean, I was going to say I'm sorry I have to cut it short, but we've nearly uh, the recording been... I've done is nearly two hours long, and that doesn't yeah. even count what we've done before. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will. I'll we transfer you this. Yes. May yeah. I'll, I'll set it up before I leave the house. So, yeah, that's so perfect. It's, it's just doing it while while I'm while I'm away. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna have to go now because I, I have to have to be there for just after yes. five. So si, what a pleasure! Lovely to meet you. And yeah, love um, to meet you. If you need other people to do this podcast, and you think I might be able to put a good, put in a good word, always just you know just drop us a line, and I'll I'll say nice things about it. Oh, that'd be absolutely incredible. Yeah, thanks, man. No, but totally actually, uh, I, I I only ever met Ed once at a gig. I died on my ass, and he did a preview. Uh, but I, I messaged <laughs> him a while ago, uh, but he he didn't respond. But, no. I'll I'll nudge him because he's got nothing else going on at the moment. All he does is sit in his house and do podcasts. So I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll nudge him to to do it. Oh, perfect. Cheers, man. I will. Yeah. Uh, I'll speak to you really soon. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Right. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks everyone for listening. Until the next time, I'll see you later. Cheers, man. Hopefully we could do this again in person one yeah, day. Yeah, that would be lovely. I'd love that. Yeah. Cheers. Cool. Thanks, man. See you later. Bye. Bye. So that was Matthew Crosby. Thank you to him for coming on. That's an absolute joy. And also thanks to him for offering to get some other guests on for me. I'm going to be taking him up on that offer and as such have some exciting guests lined up, which I've not organised yet, but I'm saying it now because it's going to happen. So you can find Matthew Crosby. He's on Instagram as Matthew Crosby one He is on Twitter at Matthew Crosby. And crucially, go and check out his podcasts. They're they're absolutely brilliant. If you haven't heard of Pappies so far, then like, what have you been doing with your life? 
go and check out Pappy's. They've got they've got the the flat share slam down and bangers and mash. And obviously, uh, Pappy's had their series Bad Alt on BBC Three, and that is that's available. You can find that on the internet somewhere. Yeah, just go and check out everything that Pappy's have done, and also listen to his radio show with their gamble, which is Sunday mornings on Radio X. That is eight a.m. to eleven a.m. But it's also available as a podcast on the Radio X app and on anywhere you can get your podcasts. So go and do that while I have you here. I am, well, you know, lockdown's been tough because I lost my job and all sorts. So I'm, I'm starting up a business on Fiverr. So I'm offering podcast recording. I'm also going to be offering voiceover stuff. Should anyone want this voice on anything that you're doing, go and check that out. And I'm also going to be offering myself as a remote session drummer. So should you need a session drummer for anything, you know, short clips to long clips, whatever you want, entire albums, I will do it. Yeah, just search Side Eves and, and you'll find me. Obviously, <laughs> in the wise of podcast editing, there, there have been a number of things that have gone wrong, as we discussed during the podcast. But as you can hear, it's a great podcast. So even when it does go wrong, it still comes out sounding good because that's that, that's how good I am. So yeah, throw me a business. If you're starting a podcast and you want it edited, produced to any degree, if you want stings created, anything like that, give me a shout either through Fiverr or send me a message on sort of Instagram or whatever or uh, email me at teapartypod at gmail.com Likewise, if you could go and give me some likes and subscribe on any podcasting app or give us a five-star review on iTunes that would be really, really appreciated and that would be real kind of you and exciting news, there's going to be some merch coming soon we're going to have some stickers and mugs Obviously, you've got to have mugs. You know, maybe some more stuff. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll let you know what I will have on offer. If there's anything in particular that you think would be good, you let me know and I will get it made for you, possibly. One way or another. I'll, I'll, I'll sort something out. Thanks for listening, guys. It's been a real, real blast this week. So, until I see you again, drink tea, be good to each other. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>